It's looking to bounce back here a little bit this morning as we get going on a Monday morning coming off two straight weeks in a row to the downside. A couple of things indicating we might get a little bit of a bounce this morning ahead of a ton of Fed speak coming up this week. Almost every single day we'll have uh, comments on watch from Fed speakers, including we'll get some comments from uh, the big man himself, uh, Fed Chair Powell, coming up later in the week. Uh, lots on watch as far as the individual movers this morning as well. Tesla announcing some layoffs. Global layoffs, we'll touch on that. Cisco looking pretty good early on with an upgrade coming through this morning. Uh, Goldman Sachs out with earnings. We'll get Morgan Stanley tomorrow. We'll get Netflix coming up this week. Right back into uh, the heart of earnings season. But a lot of people pointing to big tech to kick things off this week. Uh, providing some strength, possibly 0.6 to the upside right now for the NASDAQ. We're right back to 440. Bitcoin trying to bounce after that. Uh, flush out that we had uh, at the end of last week as well. Crazy, crazy movement uh, across the board, not only for uh, equities, but Bitcoin uh, heading into the weekend on Friday. Um, overall, though, the market's still hanging out top end of the range here as we start the new week. Yeah, hopefully. Shrew's muted. We'll get right to it. But he's, uh, he's coming up right now. Market moving downside here in a pretty big way right now. Yeah, hopefully we'll get a better week, a better continuation, because we sold off aggressively there on Friday. Uh, a couple more headlines to discuss. Apple iPhone sales continue to be an issue. Global sales down about 10%. Also, Tesla struggling with the higher rates. They're looking at cutting a sizable amount of their workforce, Brendo, to get their balance sheet back in order. We did get some uh, retail sales data there, maybe pushing the futures downside a little bit here. Stronger than expected. Month over month, March retail sales data 0.6 to the upside versus 0.4 expected on that. If you take out uh, autos, uh, still 0.3 versus 0.2. X gas and autos, uh, 0.3 versus 0.2 as well. So the year over year number uh, downside ever so slightly, 1.5% versus 2.5%. Uh, still indicating. Plenty of strength, though, in the uh, overall economy here. But um, as I mentioned, a little bit of a downtick here, guys, for uh, the market, both the NASDAQ and the S&P. Still positive on the morning, though. Happy Monday. Yes, sir. Happy Monday. And for those of you south of the border, happy tax day. Although I suppose nobody's excited about that in the U.S. But, uh, yeah, you know, I guess you got till midnight to get that done. So uh, do your thing. We got a little, we get till the end of the month here in Canada. But... Look, it was, a while, it was kind of like a geopolitical weekend sort of deal. Uh, Bitcoin was moving around a little bit, uh, as to be expected, obviously. Oil prices, oddly enough, came down. We saw the big move that you guys were talking about on the podcast with gold on Friday. So uh, all of these things, we're going to have to keep our ear to the ground because you still could see some fallout geopolitically uh, throughout the week. That said, we got earnings on tap. Goldman made a lot of money. I... Shocked at that, uh, big time. Nobody's surprised that Goldman made money. And then not so great news for Apple uh, there. But then we've been hearing about the slowdown in sales for quite some time. And a Tesla with a lot of layoffs. So that's going to be big time in play today. And of course, can't go too far without looking at Captain Bitcoin. After that move. Yeah, 66 now though. Wow, it came right back pretty much. I think you just wait. Like These spikes and like the retracement plays in Bitcoin have been fantastic. We're going to start looking for more of them. Trying to find a level here for Tesla, 164, 160. Every level. Um, I think you want to buy Tesla today for sure. I just got to figure out where and when. Uh, but yeah, welcome back. Should be a good uh, good Monday here. If it's if this week is anything like last week, let's get ready to do some damage one more time uh, here again. Congratulations, Scotty Scheffler. What a great uh, basically wire to wire there. It was pretty close for a minute until we get to the last 10 holes or so it was pretty dominating um so that was fun but the market just went down and then right up again so i don't know something might have just happened there i don't like we just went from 18.3 down to 18.270 and now straight up to the upside i don't know if i missed something there at 8.30 but uh market starting to really get going again up another one percent here and sort of shaking off uh all these geopolitical worries and it's like when russia ukraine uh invaded ukraine the market was down 1% or something and ended up the day up 2%. So it was like a complete reversal of 3%. Uh, so let's see if that happens today again. Tesla, I think it's finding a base down here around 170. I think I like the long, especially that it's down 1%. I think it's actually a good story. Let's see what happens here for Tesla. Um, 168 probably.
Yeah, interesting move for the futures right now with uh, yields. I wanted to mention taking out the highs right now as well. This is a weekly chart of the 30 year. So we are right back through last week's high and then some right now for the 30 year 4.71 coming into play right now. You got to go back to November uh, to maybe see the uh, next stop up around 4.8 uh, for the 30 year. The uh, dollar strong as it has been uh, heading into a brand new week here, taking out uh, last week's highs right now, in fact, for the DXY. So uh, one of those days when we're starting to see, yeah, the overall market move with the dollar and yields in the same direction. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't happen a lot, but here we go again. And we got that last week, but we got to the red side when yeah. the market was red and the yields were on the way down as well. I think it was like Wednesday or Thursday, something like that. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Yeah, definitely keeping a focus on yields as well. we'll you know, it's, uh, we already got CPI uh, last week, but we'll wait for that next uh, Fed meeting um, in, um, I believe, May? It's, it's May 1st, yeah. May 1st, yeah, yeah. wraps so up actually May 1st. Very, very close. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Brendo, uh, the two-year as well, right back into that near the highs that we put in on Wednesday, 4.95 was the high. We're printing 4.917 at the moment, so make your point. As the market uh, continues to rip here, uh, now a 0.9 for the NASDAQ. Yeah, we'll just recap real quick. Uh, retail sales there month over month for March, stronger than expected, 0.6 versus 0.4 on the month over month number if you come down here year over year downside ever so slightly that might be the positive angle uh 1.5 percent versus two and a half expected there for um, retail sales you take out gas and autos basically in line with expectations but yeah not a heck of a lot on the economic calendar of note this week uh, some housing data tomorrow we do get as i mentioned a whole bunch of fed speak uh, basically every single day this week. So we'll keep an eye out for comments. But um, here goes the market back to the upside. Uh, Morgan Stanley tomorrow, we get Netflix on Thursday. That's probably the uh, major earnings uh, storyline as far as the week is concerned outside of the banks, obviously. Uh, Goldman today, MS tomorrow. There's uh, 1.12, nice gap here for Netflix to start. And it was interesting last week, we didn't really get that good uh, results from JP Morgan, some others, but Goldman absolutely knocking it out of the park today. Everything was up. We'll go through this, I guess, on the rundown, but fixed income trading revenue, 10% increase. Equities trading rose 10%. Investment banking fees skyrocketed 32% year over year. They beat on both the top and bottom line. Guidance, we're going to get that on the call. I haven't got it quite yet, but good luck for Goldman here, Brendo. Uh, just seeing a note on this one, Triple D, uh, 3D Systems bouncing to the upside here. Uh, company gets FDA clearance for world's first 3D printed uh, peak cranial implants. So good for them, I suppose. But um, wow, this thing has come off a long, long way. Uh, four bucks, I guess. A bit of a level here for uh, DDD. Yeah, you talking about things that uh, have come off a little bit. Uh, DJT is the one that you got to look at right yeah, now for that. Uh, but look, DDD, that's a good story. You'd like to see something like that do a little more volume, but DJT just now, uh, and it was, I want to say like 10 minutes ago that this started rolling over, and the market's higher, which is great. That's what we want to see, but... This one feels like it's uh, going for another one of one of those sell-offs, and it's been trend down. So it, it fell apart at thirty-two dollars, pretty much at the open on Friday. They talked about uh, DJT here, and it closed right back up, getting back into that same level. So it was a bit of a, rally, a relief rally on Friday. You're essentially giving a lot of that up. I, I think it might be a short to pop situation. I think the last few times that it's done this, you've been able to look for that move back up after the open and then try to fade off that at previous key levels. So sometimes it's a previous resistance. You know, a lot of times it'll pop back in and you try to get it in front of previous support, like that 35 in here, failed 35. Something in the same thing, like underneath 30 bucks, this is probably going to be a pop and fade. You alluded to Goldman Sachs, they made money, they're up. Great, Morgan Stanley's in sympathy right now, but then they got to do their own report tomorrow. I'm more interested for, not the numbers from Morgan Stanley, but what they have to say um, with regard to the controversy from last week. But all systems go for Goldman Sachs. All systems no go for DJT. Yeah, Goldman nicely done today, up 4%. So it's nice to see that after we had some of those uh, reports there on Friday where JP Morgan started to head to the downside. And we had potentially a worrisome spot for Goldman because you had three straight down days, broke through 400, and then got right into some support. But that good story here is 
it ba it's bouncing off that. So I think it looks like Goldman, and it's hard to trade it on the day of the report, but I would figure that Goldman takes out this 420 and its highs. So good day today for Goldman Sachs. We will get to some of those uh, numbers as we go because it's going to be on the watch list. And then right here as well, JP Morgan trying to get back. I mean, not a whole bunch of volume today, only 100,000 shares. But again, maybe you get that one big move down. I think it's better to wait for a couple days, but this is nice, at least getting some relief. Like if Goldman had missed as well, then you could see these banks starting to head to the downside. And then of course, that Morgan Stanley trade, which was one of the best trades for me last week. Um, and we made it in a couple minutes there. Uh, as Neil mentioned, the wealth department there, uh, downside move. But they were actually doing really well as well uh, up until that point. So they're looking to take out some highs. So I think the financial sector seems to be pretty healthy right now, but um, you know, just some minor pullbacks helped out by Goldman earnings today. We'll see if Schwab and all that can come through with uh, nice numbers as well. We're coming through from Fed's Williams right now. So as I mentioned, just be aware, this is gonna be on and off uh, throughout the week. My own view is that rate cuts will likely start this year. Amazing. Um, I think we've been uh, dealing with that ongoing here. Um, I, let's talk CRM here real quick. There was a note this morning about them potentially picking up this Informatica. Uh, I was also reading that it's potentially going to be at a pretty steep discount from their last valuation. 3% uh, downside here for uh, Salesforce back to key level here. Yeah, it's a company, unless you're uh, familiar with it, um, you know, not, not that well known. They manage data across cloud and uh, on-premises systems. They have clients like Unilever, Toyota, Deloitte. So I'll have to see how that works out. Needham uh, commenting today about CRM maintaining the buy and uh, reiterating the $345 price target. So they seem to like the deal. We'll have to see how the market likes it, though. Uh, just double checking here. Yeah, you got to go out to May. Uh, yeah, May 28th, end of May even, to uh, get earnings from CRM the next time. But uh, yeah, back to February levels here for Salesforce. Yeah, I saw that on the way in. It's like, okay, well, it's not a, it wasn't a firm offer that I saw. It was just speculation as to what it might be. It's, you, look, it's not weird that you see a stock down when they're making an acquisition, but when the first note is that, um, the bid is not is going to be at a lower price than Informatica's Friday close. You're like, oh, so if it, if they're getting it at not that bad of a deal, then why are you down like that three percent? But as you said, Brennan, like you're waiting to get into some key levels here. You don't have earnings for a bit, but 275 looks pretty interesting. I always like to look for like 10, 1030, somewhere in in the in the late morning if there is an acquiring company that gets beaten down because they're making that acquisition, usually look for that to bottom out some between 10 and 10.30. And 75 would be the level for me on CRM. I like the stock, but until you actually have a firm offer here, which I haven't seen, I think you gotta step back and just be patient with them. I mean, it just broke the 50 period on the daily from a technical standpoint. Now you do want to uh, be patient with dip buys. I did see at least one or two sources on DJT saying they're filing uh, to sell 21 million shares. The float's only 39, so obviously that's not uh, fantastic news. Delusion for DJT, the reason why they're going down. Yuck, yeah. Um, I don't even really, I mean, I was looking at Apple, CRM on the radar, but again, a good stock there. I really like Mark Benioff. Um, I, I think you buy dips on this name, a big AI a name, they have Einstein as well. A lot of companies sort of already intertwined with Salesforce and some of that management there, uh, the management software that are involved there, customer acquisition. It's kind of like what I was thinking about Microsoft. Once you're already in with Copilot, um, do you ever leave it? So HubSpot, I, I mean, there are some competitors here, I guess, for Salesforce. Nice little dip down. The market's... I'm still not convinced about this market move, but you know, again, if, if you did want to buy something, I think Salesforce is probably, again, going to be on radar for a lot of names as it falls back in. I'm always looking at these 200 periods, like so 250, 260, something like that in here for Salesforce, I think it's probably worth picking something up again. I mean, if you're gonna go all the way back into January levels, I mean, that's pretty good to get it all back. So January, we thought we were going to get six rate, hike, or rate, huck, rate hikes, rate cuts this year. Now we've been reading none, you know, some still saying two. Well, I mean, you can check the, the Fed rate tool there. But yeah, I don't know. All was well when we were getting the rate cuts. Now we're not. 
and some of these um, sort of mega cap, high flyer sort of tech names will start to come back in. And I think Salesforce is going to be part of that. So um, yeah, 250, 260, I think on a little bit of a beat up market. I really like Salesforce. Fill in guest host here for uh, a Monday from Trade Ideas, Michael Noss uh, off on uh, welcoming a new member to his family for the next couple of weeks. So uh, congratulations to the NOS household once again. Uh, Steve Gomez is joining us from Trade Ideas this morning to touch on a uh, few things that are happening as far as the overall market is concerned to kick things off. On a Monday, Steve, great to have you. It's um, an interesting look here as we start a new week coming off back-to-back -back negative showings here. Sorry, for, guys, I can't hear. Uh, not there we only. go. Steve, Steve, can you hear me? I'm hearing you now. I hear you. I mean, amazing. Happy Monday. All right. Um, I was just you like my shirt. Sorry? Uh, my shirt. I've got a lot of flannel to fill today from Michael Noss. I just thought I would wear this in honor of him. The, the uh, Canadian tuxedo. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, we appreciate it. Um, it's, it's great to have you, as I mentioned. Um, market setting up in a, a pretty interesting way here. You've, you've come fully prepared with uh, a ton of charts. I just want to say, uh, for anyone who uh, maybe doesn't know Steve, this guy has been trading for decades, uh, very active online, uh, very active on uh, YouTube, going back lots and lots of years, so knows what he's talking about. Uh, appreciate your uh, time this morning, Steve. What are you looking at? Sure. Well, as you said, you know, going into the weekend, I didn't quite know what we were going to wake up with. So the first few slides um, I have is just kind of showing the precarious position the market is in. We are kind of at the abyss here. And I'm going to give a shout out to my good friend, Brian Shannon, who taught me the 50 day moving average is a general bill of health. Uh, that's the blue line. I'm arrow highlighting these charts. So starting with the NASDAQ, really hanging in there. But boy, it's, it's hanging by a ledge. Uh, we're getting a bit of a gap up today. Um, that has been leading the market. Uh, if we move to the S&P, same type of situation, um, respectively, that uh, 50 day moving average in blue um, is going to be tested probably again today, just like it was tested Friday. Uh, I mean, these are these are beautiful trends. Uh, just for those that aren't aware, I use the 10, the 20 in red, the 50 in blue, and that 200 down there in uh, black. That's a pretty good fanned out chart. It's about as good as um, a trend will give us. If we move on to the Russell, IWM is starting to show some signs of cracks. There's been literally three days now of trading and closing under the respective 50-day moving average for the small caps. And as you can see in that little thumbnail down below in the bottom of the chart, it's not really performing as well as the NASDAQ and the S&P have. So for whatever reason, uh, that's kind of the stepchild that's not really behaving as well as the rest. So we're coming into today. Again, I'm, I'm quite surprised that we're not um, seeing gap downs. Uh, I, you know, who knows what's going to happen. I do expect a lot of volatility today uh, through the geopolitical news. But now if we move on to the GDX, this is where the money's been flowing. Um, we are above all moving averages. I call that trading in clean air. And Friday had a pretty good and much needed reversal, I, I must say, in the gold miners. Uh, pretty heavy uh, red candles and selling, but all it did was just come back down and touch my favorite uh, indicator, the 10 SMA. As long as you're trading above the 10 SMA on a daily chart, you are in motion, you are riding a trend, uh, and I use the 20 as a backstop. So. With that in mind, the trade of the week here at Trade Ideas is curated by myself. Um, you know, Michael does the uh, strength uh, index and he's got a lot of math behind him. But for myself, I'm not the mathematician Michael is. Uh, I am discretionary. So I kind of do a top down approach. And so focusing on where the money is flowing, which is the gold miners, I've come up with a name that um, some people might be familiar with. But before we do that, I want to give another shout out to Brian Shannon here. We're going to take a look at the uh, four cycles of uh, the four stages of, of um, price action. And, and this uh, is relevant, whether it's a single stock or an entire index. And as you can see, we've got the accumulation, the markup and distribution. And by the way, I'm just going to make a point. I feel like the general market we're in right now, we're kind of in a distribution stage three. And then, of course, decline. Nobody likes those except for good short sellers. So that arrow that I drew um, is the ideal sweet spot to try and find longer term trends that are popping out of that uh, accumulation phase and starting to come into markup. 
Now, a lot of these gold miners, uh, they've had a pretty good run, but there's one that hasn't. And we'll go ahead and bring that up. It's HYMC, might be a familiar name uh, in the Reddit community. I am fully aware that AMC owns 22% stake in this mining company. But um, this too has had a pretty precipitous fall. We're going to start with the weekly time frame. And what I'm showing you here is uh, one of Trade Idea's newer layouts that uh, the genius Michael Noss built. He basically took the um, four stages and created four different windows, stage one, two, three, and four. And when I was doing a webinar over the weekend, I happened to notice that HYMC was popping up on stage one, getting ready to possibly move into stage two. So again, this is a weekly chart. Um, it's dropped precipitously from its uh, past. And it's very volatile, so I'll remind people again, if you're going to play these, uh, this particular name, I would probably consider using half size of your normal position size just to accommodate the volatility. But we've got HYMC popping up here on our four-stage scanner at uh, Trade Ideas. And by the way, the AI assistant uh, also was trading HYMC. So something happened last week that kind of changed gears in the stock. So we'll go to one more slide here. We're going to zoom in a little bit. Um, the dailies on the left and the 15 minute is on the right. This is my bread and butter time frame. And again, on that thumbnail on HYMC on the daily, you can see that giant monthly decline. This thing has really been beaten up and it looks nothing like the other um, gold and silver miners. So if we're gonna have a move in gold and silver, um, you never know if HYMC is gonna wanna participate. Um, again, it's part of that Reddit crowd, the Wall Street bet crowds. They're very familiar with this stock, but it's still, at the end of the day, it's still mining and pulling silver and gold out of the ground. And if that's gonna to continue to be something that the market is interested in, I wanna be a part of it. So I've drawn a couple of long arrows there on that daily chart to show you how the first push and then a nice, beautiful consolidation right at that 10 SMA. I love that look. And then a push out of there on Thursday and then a big pullback on Friday. And we'll zoom into our final uh, uh, perspective here. The 15-minute size, just go back one slide, I'm sorry. The 15-minute uh, share um, uh, uh, candle, it's showing you that 130, which is a five-day moving average. It held it very nicely. And so I circled kind of the close on Friday and we broke back above our 10 SMA. And as I look here, um, we are right around the area that I'm going to suggest as a uh, possible entry, which is $4. This is a slippery entry. Um, normally, I'd like to see a little bit more consolidation coming out. We've just had a pretty big pullback. But I'll say this, just don't lose sight of HYMC. Whether or not you decide to participate around $4 is up to you. But that's just kind of a general idea. And then, of course, I said at the end there, please, please, these are volatile. The only thing you can do for volatility is to downsize your risk, and that's cut your share size in half. As you alluded I hope that to, made sense. Yeah, no, uh, 100%. As you alluded to, obviously, other outside influences in a stock like this. What would your time frame be if you did get that break above $4 a day, two days, until it shows you it's done type of thing? That's a great question because I want to uh, accentuate my trading style is uh, I like to surf the market. I will load it big and I will take a good half size profit after a day and a half. Ideally, I get a full day run of green. The following day we get follow through. I'm contrary and I'm fading out of that for probably half of my position to pay myself. And then I'll just kind of scale out, um, let it run and see if I can stick around. Sometimes that last third um, position will make more than your first uh, big scalp that you took in, in a day and a half. So again, showing you how far it has come, depending upon how the gold miners uh, do, this thing could have a, a way to go. And considering also with the fact it's coming out of stage one and possibly entering stage two in that uh, accumulation graph. Uh, going back to that uh, first chart that you showed of the overall market, you mentioned you know really, really strong trend still to the upside here. Is there a time, if you go back in time, that this reminds you of as far as the overall market is concerned. You mentioned maybe a little more volatility coming in this week with some geopolitical headlines. You know, there's a lot of people I think that are participating in this market and seeing these conditions maybe for the first time. If we went back in time and looked on a chart, is there an area that you might send people to do some uh, testing? I can't really think of a particular um point in time and, and the details to that point in time. I'm a visual person. And so I'm I'm just gonna say this, I drew that 50 day moving average for a reason and we've been holding it. 
but the very first day that we close below, we may test it and wick back above and close above with a stick save, you know, to use a nice Canadian uh, <laughs> example there. Um, but the first close below the 50-day, rising 50-day moving average is going to be a huge red flag for me. And I'm personally about 90% in cash right now because I'm not really liking what I'm seeing for longer term overnight holds. Steve Gomez from Trade Ideas filling in for Michael Noss. Uh, we appreciate your time this morning. Best of luck this week. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. The kick save in there. I like it. It's hockey. I like that. I like that. Look, man, it's playoffs right now. I was just, I was actually mostly curious uh, about the axes you had in the back there. Like, it was, that was pretty cool to see. Obviously, obviously, Steve plays. I think we can uh, get that sense, but pretty, pretty cool. And what I love to see, and when we bring, we bring everybody else on, like these different, different guests to give you those different perspectives, but like, how often do we look at things like an HYMC? And for us, when we're talking about these movers and runners, it'll typically be like, ah, eh, what's, what's like the day trade breakout or like the big runner when it's on volume and not necessarily give you some kind of a swing aspect. And I think, you know, obviously, this name has other reasons why it gets exciting, which is cool for a day trader. It's got a decent enough short flow. The whole AMC thing means there's a few extra eyeballs on it when it starts moving. And when something like this starts breaking out, it can get uh, pretty exciting uh, for it, though. So again... You know, I like it. I do like looking at this one when it has a little bit of extra volume. You do need some kind of a catalyst on our side in an individual day for it to start going. Like I could look at this and say, yeah, five dollars looks like a good breakout or support at three and all that good stuff. But when it's done twenty thousand shares in volume, you're waiting for something else, uh, another shoe uh, to drop. So I think it's worth having on the radar because we've seen gold move around a bit. Uh, you've seen some of the lower cap oil and energy names be fantastic. I'm talking about HUSA, uh, things like that. So when you get an overall move in a specific sector, sometimes these lower float, uh, lower smaller cap names can be exciting trades. And I think HYMC is one worth keeping an eye on. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, great ideas there um, from Stephen. Great to hear another perspective there. Shout out to Brian Shannon again. Shout out to Michael Noss. Congratulations one more time. Um, I, I'm looking at Palantir today, possibly again for uh, you know another breakout here. You are going to get an opportunity to get through this 2320. I feel like so. Here's Palantir right now, basing out, trying to get back going to the upside here. Down on the day while the market's up. I think there's a chance for this one to get going. Um, I'm looking at like 23. 23.25, basically, 23 and a quarter. We could take that level um, and off to the races for Palantir. So I kind of, I don't know why it hasn't worked out. Uh, what, where's my daily here? Oh, there it is. Um, and then here on the 20-minute as well, breaking above the 50 period, breaking above the 200 period, um, and then just getting up upside. So I, I like this break. 23.30 looks like here for Palantir. So just one name that's always on my radar. But that's another one. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, not, interesting to meet the guy. I feel like he can come back. So we, we like Steve. Yeah. We'll, we'll have him back on. Rock on, Mr. Gomez. Yeah, her, her layoff in this one. All right. Uh, let's get some uh, analyst moves here. Adara's ready to go over at the screen with upgrades and downgrades. Lots of interesting Off names player, on right? the list today. To kick off the upgrades, we have Lockheed Martin, Martin up about more than 1.5% right now with this upgrade from J.P. Morgan Stanley. Certainly interesting when you consider the geopolitical context right now. So nice look for Lockheed. Coupang here uh, up about the same amount, about 1.5% here with an upgrade from Citigroup. B of A Securities upgrading Cisco. And Needham, one of the many analysts initiating coverage on Reddit after its March 21st IPO. Generally, some pretty positive notes here for RDTT. In terms of downgrades, we have two Chinese EVs kicking off the list here, both the downgrades from Macquery, BYD and Lee Auto, though both of them are trading to the upside as of right now. Logitech here getting downgraded as well from Morgan Stanley and gapping down about 3%, whereas we have Avid Exchange down about 5% right now in the day with this downgrade from Goldman Sachs, guys. Good look there for uh, Cisco. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, not so great for those Chinese EV names. We've seen them under pressure. Lee Auto, it's up 1% because all the Chinese ADRs are up. Uh, gapping higher over the weekend here, but this could be a little flat bottom break. The last couple of times Liado has given you like a support breaking, it's been pretty, I mean, spectacular if you're short, I suppose, is the best way to think about it, and it's doing the same thing at 29. The good news for Liado would be since it's pullback, you've got obviously a big level here at 26, but if this doesn't hold on to 29 even, 
Yikes, uh, I think you've got a nice little two, three dollar area that it could retrace. So Lee Auto's on the radar for this week. Just a matter of maybe you need a weekday for it to happen. I mean, obviously up 1% today, Bob is up 1%, Neo, Neo I think was up a couple points as well. It might be tough for it to get a breakdown on some strength, but uh, I got Lee Auto on my mind this week. The EV names have been a gift when it comes to essentially support breaking and just taking the momentum because I feel like a lot of stops are getting run on these and you want to take advantage when you can go short. So Lee Auto, 29 even, might not happen today, but we waited around for that Rivian $10 break and eventually it was good. Yeah, I mean, uh, wow, yeah, Lee Auto, okay. Yikes. What was the price of Lee Auto? Well, it's 29 and a half. 29, okay, okay. Whew. Right, I mean, yeah. it's better than it's doing better than Neo. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought I thought it was breaking th twenty to the downside, but breaking thirty. Okay. Oh, not yet. Um, so this Cisco right here, this is a name that I think can get going again when some uh, old tech becomes a little popular one more time. We'll hear about cybersecurity heading into election year. You know, we already know about um, their business models, and it's been real boring, man. I mean, this has been basically one of the big tech names that has been dead for a while. So I don't know if it's about to wake up. We saw Dell do nothing for a while, then take off. Um, similar stuff to Intel before, and now Intel's going the other way. But if you're, you're going to get above the 50 period here with an upgrade, I don't, I mean, it's not super interesting right now. There is a dividend in this name. I just wanted to call it up to show that, you know, although there's been huge moves in mega cap tech, I mean, this name, Cisco, is about as steady as can be. And I'm not sure there's much money to be made in here. But you never know if you can get it you know, down in around 50 on a break and you're right, then maybe you can get into 55. You know, with earnings, you get, get into this area. So let's see if they're maybe calling a little bit of a break here on Cisco. Let's see if it works. Breaking back above 50 bucks. I like the trade, so it has to get there first. $50 long on Cisco, I think, is a trade that we should probably take. This morning for uh, CSCO, let's get going. Uh, Sharif's going to kick us off here with a look at the futures. 51.67, guys, that's where we closed off Friday. The Friday low, 51.50, was a quick wick down there, and then we got bought up. We're above 5,200 right now, so let's go ahead and say this. If we defend 5,200 at the open, we'll use that as support. If we can't break... Uh, if we can't break below 5,200, let's look for that 5,250 as a level of resistance. That takes us to the high point of the last few days last week. Well, let's get into everything else you need to know here heading towards the open on a Monday. If you haven't done so, grab that. Super easy. Go to TraderTV.live, wait for the pop-up, enter your email address, and then you get the watch list every single day for absolutely free. Uh, from us, has everything on it you need to know in the morning. Let's go to Apple to kick things off. Research firm IDC coming through with a report this morning uh, suggesting iPhone shipments down 10% in Q1 in 2024, even when as far as saying Android manufacturers such as Samsung have taken over as uh, the world's number one uh, smartphone um, as far as sales is concerned. Yep. Uh, if you look at the analytics on our podcast, for mm -hmm. example, okay. That is completely not the case, uh -huh. and it's dominated by people with uh, iPhones. So, I mean, it depends on, on what you're looking at, but, I mean, there's still a ton of iPhone users out there. I guarantee you this is somehow globally distributed. If you were to look at the West, way more iPhones than Androids probably. Sure. East, maybe not the same. Uh, just speculating there. But let's talk about the actual data, the factual data, 10%, 9.6 to be example, year over year. This time last year, big ship, big drop down. They shipped... 50 million last year, they shipped 55 and a half million. So about 5 million less, as Brendo mentioned. Samsung regaining the lead here with their market share 22 and a half percent. That is up from 20.8 percent last year. But there's other headwinds as well. Xiaomi, uh, Huawei, as well as others, they're also taking market share there in China. But if you look at the bit latest 2024 smartphone um, poll, they're looking at growth. Resurgence and growth this year, 7.8%. Uh, the smartphone market's supposed to grow globally this year, Brendo. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. Obviously, heading into the next couple of weeks here, we'll get earnings from uh, all of these. But a huge move up on Friday, guys. We're trying to get back to basically aftermarket levels here for Apple so far. Still down about half a percent. Yeah, and, you know, that statistic, I don't wonder how much that has to do with just the overall demographic of, of the viewers and listeners. 
the podcast. Like, I, I would just imagine uh, that's the prevailing factor. That said, I mean, forget about Friday. Thursday was just insane. It was a, it was the biggest day Apple had had since uh, I think it was like the middle of last year. Just an incredible run, and then it followed it up with a big bounce in the morning, and then a solid bounce in the afternoon. Not the best, not the best of news when you're losing market share for them. But we're expecting middle of the year going to get some fantastic announcements uh, out of these guys. The 50 period on the daily is 177. And we closed at 176 and a half. You can probably see where I'm going to go with this. If it's not breaking out in here, that 177, you would have a failure of the 50 period. You have a lower high after that big, massive upward move. I just think to that level, it's a bit of a short. I'm um, using that 50 period in the double top of 177. And you know what? You can't even ignore if it were to dip down to 173 and a half, it's a couple of dollars away. I just think you get a bit of a range bound type of situation. And if you can hold on to that bottom, it was afternoon support on Thursday that turned into morning support on Friday. Those are both like excellent levels on high volume days to play off of. So I think you can I think you can play support and resistance in both directions on Apple with a bit of an anticipation that you can have an inside an inside the range move, at least for today. So you have relative strength in the last couple of sessions running into negative news, and you're also at that 50 period. So I would suspect that you don't stray too far away from that 50 period if that's the case. Um, I have Apple here as it is going to be, I don't know if we're going to get it, but it's going to be my number one trade today. I'm going long Apple, honestly. I don't, like, the big story for Apple for me has nothing to do with current iPhones, has nothing to do with any of their current um, lineup of products. It has to do with, with what is coming. We've already talked about that MacBook and what that did um, for the stock. Like, they did, all they said was, we're putting in new chips into our MacBook. Okay, thank you very much, boom. Like, right in the face of the market. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not buying a new iPhone. Are you buying a new iPhone? No one here is buying a new iPhone until you see the new iPhone. So once that comes, we'll see in June, it'll be the Worldwide Developers Conference. Um, wait for some levels, but I'm looking at, what is going on here? Oh, I have some like strike through lines in this, okay. Um, anyways, uh, we're gonna wait to see what happens with the uh, Worldwide Developers Conference in June. But until then, man, I think Apple's a buy. I mean, if we like the tech story, every other mega cap tech name is in and around, you know, these levels up here, not 190. You know, it should be slightly off of its high. However, I do understand the story with Apple. I'm not trying to look at this with rose-colored glasses. I just think they're going to sell a lot. We, the AI is so huge, and the story has just started with Apple. So worried about China, yes, but worried about Apple as a whole, no. So, I, you know, I like the divestiture into India. I think if they can sell just as many phones in India as in China, potentially at some point, um, as that economy battles and, and gets that money back. And we've had Raheem Alani talk about sort of the rise of the middle class in India and all that. So I, I like Apple. I think they work, and I want to buy all of them dips. All right, let's talk some uh, Tesla here. Another one trying to get back to the upside here after a gap lower this morning. Um, this comes out, kind of a, a surprise here, I think, or caught a little bit off guard, caught a few people a little bit off guard. Uh, we get down to 168. I mean, everyone, I think, is eyeing 150 if you zoom out on a daily chart for Tesla, but trying to bounce here this morning. Yeah, Elon was at the Science Awards yesterday, the 2024 Breakthrough Prize, and he was making comments with respect uh, uh, to m multiple different things. But the headline really does come down to this huge layoffs here, Brendo. They, they employ about 140,000 and a half million, uh, 140,000 people worldwide, and they're looking about cutting 10% of that, Elon says, as we prepare the company for the next phase of growth, it is extremely important to look at every aspect of the company for cost reductions and increasing productivity. As part of this effort, we have gone through a review of the organization, have made the difficult decision to reduce our headcount by more than 10%. So sad for some people are going to lose their jobs. Um, trying, however, right now to get back to uh, almost positive here, still about half a percent to go trying and usually I mean how many times have we said in the last year like cost cutting good stocks go up when uh, you say you're going to be doing layoffs or any or any strong measure of cost cutting but at the end of the day the price action is going to be king and I think in this particular case 
Look, Tesla has bounced. Last week, you had 168 twice. You had 168 on Thursday. That was the day that everything was sort of ramping pretty much the most the majority of the session. And then at the beginning of the week, it bounced off 168. Well, this pre-market, what do you think it bounced off? The 168 level. So if that actually holds off the open, I'd be looking longs off 168. If it flushes through there, it's got like $7 to the downside because 160 was that big support level for Tesla. So I don't, want, I don't necessarily think you want to get too cute. I almost feel the same way uh, about this as, uh, as Apple. You look at the, the range that got put on Friday, and I don't wonder if when you get to the top of that, you don't just short that too. I, I'm very much anticipating, and everything, almost everything I was looking at this morning felt that way, where I, I think you could see some inside action for today and possibly tomorrow. There was a lot of volatility that we saw last week. Um, obviously, ge geopolitical issues and all that good stuff. But you know, Tesla 168 is going to be that bigger level because of the big gap out under it. And I do not want to discount. Um, we got away from Reddit. Was it, was it, it's not Reddit. Rivian on Friday after it was a great short on Thursday. And I think you just go back to the well for this. When you get trends like this, we showed the chart of Lucid, we've shown the charts of Neo, we've shown the charts of all of these EV names, and they all look eerily similar. And when you break a support level, generally speaking, I just want to be looking short. The last time I broke a major support level, you got two big days of follow through and then a bit of a bounce. And then when the end of that run was done, you got multiple days in a row pulling back in. So I just want to play that pattern on Rivian. First looking for 925 off the open for a pop and fade. And then if it breaks higher, maybe the 950 level would be the next one up. But, you know, the EVs have been in trouble. I think it's easier. It's been a lot easier to pick on pretty much all of the ones that aren't Tesla to the short side. And when you look at those charts, they speak for themselves. And I'm looking at you, Rivian. Obviously, Fisker has gotten punked as well. Uh, Lucid didn't move as much. So I went from Rivian to Lucid on Friday, and that was a mistake. Should have just stayed with Rivian. Uh, we at 52 week. Okay, um, just writing some stuff about Google here. Look, Tesla's gonna be, again, it's funny that it's the number, number two stock, but it's gonna be my number two idea as well. I mean, any dip buys into 168, we are buying Tesla. I, I like the story here. I loved that it was down um, when we started the sticky note, down at 168. Unfortunately, now you're up $2 from that level. Doesn't mean we can't fall into there. I'm a buyer of Tesla down here at 168. I love the robo taxi thing. I love that they're getting more productive uh, or more efficient with their productivity. And unfortunately, like Sharif mentioned, many of those jobs are being lost, but this um, Tesla has printed many millionaires, and I hope that um, it is the millionaires that wind up losing their jobs because um, you know that's the way that way it should be. Um, we'll wait to see what happens here. 170. Um, 10,000, I don't know what percentage of their workforce that was. But is it about 10%? Yep. Yeah, so, yeah, not, not great there. That, that, that's too bad, but yeah, I don't know. It, it's, it's in what's been such a tough year for EVs, you know, that um, I guess job cuts are, is to be what expected. 10% is, is a lot, that seems to be too, too much, but yeah, I feel bad for that situation. But 168 down here for me is a log for Tesla. But now I feel bad about the job cut, so maybe we'll short it eventually. All right, uh, Meta showing a ton of relative strength here so far this morning, 1.3%. Uh, trying to get higher right now as well, back to 520 early on. I mean, there's not much. Citigroup with a really positive note on this, reaffirming a buy, uh, going to 590 on their price target for META. Yeah, liking this uh, a lot. Analyst Ronald Josie at Citi basically saying, with Meta's newer added excuse me, newer ad innovations, new AI video architecture and greater overall advertising adoption. We believe advertiser demand for reels will continue to improve. And so he's bumping up that price target from 525 to 590, Brendo. Good luck for Meta on the day. Uh, week Wednesday, we get uh, earnings from Meta, guys. Ooh, it gets exciting. You get those tech earnings coming in. Meta's always... You know, we get that first look and they tend to, you know, lately they've been blown out of the water and then you get things off on the good foot. Uh, today, they're up, I mean, obviously more than the market. And the good thing about Meta, ooh, when the stairs go up, you just last week put in another support level, like another higher low, not even touching the 50 period on the daily. If you go, now we'll go to the 15 minutes. So you have this, it's not exactly 505 or, it's in front of 500, but like 506 is held. 
510 on Friday. I just think looking for longs, whether or not you can get those levels seems pretty unrealistic to be able to get to be able to get like that next step in. Probably more realistic to look at resistance on Friday, which was at that 516. If that holds, I think then you're hunting for the 524 uh, top. I think the trend speaks for itself on this stock, but it's a little bit far away from the support level. This is like, with the market now up 1%, it feels a little bit more like patience for a dip buy because it's established a new uh, stair step range to the upside, and I want to be buying off of that. And it, that's been the way to go on Meta. Like when it was in the previous range, it was like the 480, 490 area that you wanted to be buying on the dips. And I think now that's turned into like 505 to 510 uh, on Meta. So you got to be patient this week. We'll see if we can't grab that one uh, at some point off of this five. I mean, I think you're, you don't have to wait till 505. I think really just anywhere in front of previous close, five, which was actually 512. All right, so I'm going to flip over to um, an, another major cap name there that's very, very similar to Google. Really, really like this, man. 160 break there, 52-week high, 116 and a quarter on Google. The sticky note is now out, just posted a couple minutes ago or a couple seconds ago. I, I just think that we're here for a reason. The trend has been amazing on Google so far. I mean, just look, look what this name looks like. It's... The chart is incredible, broke through the high, well above the 50 period, bounced off the 200. You don't, I'm not hearing, oh yeah, not hearing any negative catalysts, what's, oh no, whatsoever regarding Google here. Um, kind of just little undercover name, not really, but making these moves up, it just, what I mean by undercover is just like, it's kind of just creeping up here. We have stories on Apple, we have stories on Meta, Tesla, AMD, all the chip names, right? Meanwhile, Google just keeps on making these moves higher as they get, you know, DOJ investigations, like all throughout Europe, everyone's investigating all these companies and it's a hold my beer situation and we just continue to go higher. It's 52 week high is at 160 and a quarter. So on your sticky note today, the breakout price is 160 and a quarter. So I'm going to go long there immediately off the open, play any dips for Google. I am long Google today. I won't be looking at Meta. I'll be looking at this big name here instead. It's Google. Not a lot of volume behind uh, this move on Reddit. So far this morning, we are gapping higher here in the pre-market to the tune of about 1% right now. Uh, debuted March 21st, JP Morgan and Morgan Stanley saying everyone should hold this thing. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of people uh, now covering this as they had to wait for uh, the certain amount of days after the IPO. As Brendo mentioned, JP Morgan and Morgan Stanley making comments with respect to JP Morgan. Uh, analyst Doug Anmuth saying the daily active unique users, which is a standard metric within the industry, growth has accelerated in recent quarters and there is meaningful headroom for growth. But for now, Reddit's base of 73 million users is relatively subscale. Uh, they're looking possibly at a you know a change in that depending on how they're able to monetize monetize their data using AI. Yeah, so I, it was pretty ugly to end the week on Friday, essentially going out at the lows. But uh, again, not a lot of volume behind that. Uh, a few people still mentioning this uh, DJT. Uh, if anyone missed it, uh, they filed to potentially offer more shares. So it wasn't actually an offering, but they just filed to potentially offer more shares in the future. Yeah, like I, I think DJT is going to be a fade today. Uh, so if it, look, if it ends up like squeezing, we'll get to Reddit in a second, but if it ends up squeezing today, fair enough. But it's been trend down, and already it's been trend down, then you give up a pretty big support level at that $30 uh, in there. So if it does pop into the 29, 29, 30 range, I'd be looking to fade that off of the open. Again, it's, you know, it's going to be 10% down, so it will be SSR. Short sell restriction is going to come into play, but I don't think it matters. You dilute, and it's not going to be a good thing uh, here. As far as Reddit goes, I think we've seen this one. Like, it, it broke the IPO bottom. It then held and bounced a little bit lower off the 42. So, you know, 42 even. Like, if it makes a fresh low at this point, I don't know. I don't wonder if it's not going to get nasty. Uh, there, maybe retest that for you level. Appreciate you, Randy, as we got the refill on the coffee. So, I'll be looking for Reddit. If it loses that fr Thursday bottom, I just think you're looking for uh, shorts on them. Not one that I want to be going long. I think there's, 
Like, I feel a little bit better about some of the dip buys on those big cap tech names at the key levels than I do about sitting on the bid of Reddit at its, um, what would be an all-time low, right? Let's be honest, it's a new IPO here. So, you know, if it breaks down, I'd be on the other side. And as far as DJT, I'm looking to short the pops on that. Oh, God. Hey, what's uh, going on? What's going on? Hi in the building. Okay. Okay. Got an alert on my phone, but all is well. What? My daughter oh. skated yesterday, by the way, and there's, I, should, I should find some videos with Haley Wickenheiser yesterday, nice. who is like amazing and um shout out to her she got her signatures tons of pictures with her um absolutely amazing so what a great um what a great weekend we had again um danielle goyette there's a whole bunch of people but i know and people know women's hockey and then yesterday we saw congratulations um shout out to utica there where they had the world championships for the women's hockey where team canada won yesterday in overtime so that was really fun times in my house okay um yeah, we can talk about DJT a couple a couple minutes here. Look, I, I mean, everyone's known this isn't an investment. It's a great trading opportunity. We've talked about that over and over again. This is since that switched over from DWAC into DJT. Unfortunately, when it's a SPAC, it has a $10 floor. So guess where I think this name's going? Sub $10 would be my guess, especially when... I mean, that's, that is allowing them now to do a share offering because they've disclosed it. Well, what do you think they're going to do? So let's just wait to see. I, I feel like this is a short, probably worth paying for shorts if you get an opportunity to do that. Um, this could halt numerous times today. It's just one of those things where I feel like it was just created. I mean, look, it, so, I don't know anything about True Social. They lost 40 something million dollars. They just reported that a couple weeks ago. They only had five million worth, worth of sales. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, if we were making fun of Twitter and all that, that has a huge user base. Um, I just don't know anything about uh, True Social other than the fact that this is what the stock looks like. And uh, you know, it, it's great to trade. Probably not a great long-term investment. So uh, we'll, we'll look to fade this today. In and around $30, I think, would be the price. So let's just see the halts, play the halts. Um, and yeah, the, the thing about, the one thing I was going to say about this is, I actually, now that I look at this, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. I'm not going short this name, actually, unless we get a, quite a parabolic move. You know, we've, we've seen this name run. Like you said, it was 39 million shares. It, it, the float is not huge on this. We know what can happen in the options market and how excited this stock could get. I'd actually rather play dips or wait for a huge parabolic move. Because I just, when I just said they're short 30, I thought to myself, that is like a guarantee. Like if that doesn't work, this is going to blast up a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. And with the spread being what it is right now, I, I don't know what the liquidity is going to look like if everybody gets scared at a key level. So I just say watch out for this, but it is going to be on my radar. Already doing a million shares. I like the sort of the low float. I like the story here. And, and I just I like the volatility. Let's watch some DJT. Uh, a few other names moving around here. Charles Schwab just popping up in front of me on a scanner back through 68.90 out with earnings this morning in the pre-market here downside a little bit for SCH. Uh, w, any of the Chinese ADRs you're going to see uh, to the upside ever so slightly here. That was Baba, JD, even the uh, EV names higher here. There's XPeng or NIO, I should say, all gapping to the upside. There was some positive momentum. Uh, from the uh, Chinese side of things uh, on regulations, on securities regulations uh, coming out overnight. Uh, for those, there's Goldman, meanwhile, 4.5%, just took out the highs after a monster beat for GS to kick off the week. What a big report for Goldman. Profits jumped up 28% year over year. Revenue up 16% year over year. They beat on the top and bottom line, beating analytics expectations, metrics, Fixed income trading, 10% year-over-year jump. Equities trading, another 10% year-over-year jump. And then the biggest move here was investment banking fees jumped 32% year-over-year. They beat the mark on all uh, on all fronts, Brendo. Yeah. So if I can just mention quickly here, uh, today on how to trade, Fabian, we're going to be talking about riding the wave. We're going to be talking about small cap trading, a lesson on momentum trading. Fabian, <laughs> screen. Thank yeah. you. There we go. So we're going to be talking about that today 
at 11 with a dairy nine. Uh, just seeing another note on uh, Tesla here real quick. Senior VP Drew Baglino is said to be leaving the company as well, just coming out. Okay, I mean. Wait a minute, Drew Baglino's leaving? Yeah, like this. Well, first thing's gonna be like, does anybody know who that is? That's, Pull out that's of here. That's, that's this stock's not going up. I mean, who cares? Do we care? Do we care about that? Because Tesla didn't even Tesla didn't even move on that. Like, not even an inch. Ah, okay, fine. Like, it might have moved like twenty three. Ah, whatever. It moved like thirty cents. So call it that it, it did do something. Goldman Sachs. What a great report. And obviously they're making boatloads of money. They've gapped up a little bit here. I don't wonder if there isn't like a stink bid opportunity on the good news. Watch out there, Ram Ram. Uh, I'll give you some more slack. Somewhere around the 400 level, like if you look at this, it was pulling right back in. Oh, how gorgeous was that 390 consolidationary? When you see a good stock that has accumulation like that, that's generally speaking a good place to be buying it. But now you're getting above the 50 period moving average. I think if it dips down in like 395 is a 50 period, that to 400, if they decide to sell this off, you'd still be like the stock would still be green if it got under 400 bucks. So I'm looking at that 395 possible. A decent dip buy spot for Goldman, but it is an earnings play. I think you got to be patient. I would change nothing on Tesla with regards to that headline. It doesn't really move the needle for me. I still think you've got that flat bottom. It's not really a flat bottom, but that higher low at the 168 that's still going to be in play. So I'm not changing anything because Drew is Drew Baglino leaving the company. And it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um... Yeah, what do you guys know about Drew Baglino? I mean, we're going to see what he happens sold a bunch there. Of um, I, so I have, I have offers right now on AMD. Uh, Goldman Sachs, we've already sort of talked about that. I, I, I think it was nice that they were kick come, save the banks a little bit here temporarily. I mean, it's a great report. It's up four and a bit percent. Looking at this report, looking at JP Morgan's, I mean, all, all you can really do is try to figure out what the um, action is on the stock. And I mean, we've already bounced off of this support area. It was only one day. So what is one day does it necessarily make, you know, this huge move here? But I, I like it. It's held, it's held a 50 period. Like I said, if we get decent reports from Morgan, I think 420 comes into play, and I think it come in next couple days. So I really like that. I think JP Morgan, uh, sorry, I think Goldman Sachs breaks higher here. JP started to get going there. Now it's down about a dollar since those imbalances came out. So let's have a quick little look. Remember, this is day two for JP Morgan. They reported there on Friday and had a very bad day, down 10 bucks to 185 and closing at 182. So be careful with JP Morgan today, but let's have a quick look. As you can see here, pretty mixed buys and sell side the biggest name on here is going to be amazon that's a decent sell which is kind of a surprise um so there's amazon right now you can see on the daily it's been cooking just like google i almost went to amazon instead of to google so amazon right there does come with a sell that could be an early gift honestly uh, especially with this market going high side i don't really tsm uh, there as well, we've looked at that. That's already up another 2%, so that continues uh, to go higher, although that still has some breakout to it at 150 as well. There's Apple showing, whoopsies, there's Apple showing up with a little bit of a sell as well. Okay, good, I'm at 174, not 175, so that's coming into play. And then just as I look, I like Nike actually off 90. I meant to talk about this last week. It was, oh, okay, 93, that's nice. It was last week's idea on the sticky note at 90, and we got within a few pennies of that on that bad on, on Friday there. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm looking was meta, at. Was Meta on there? Um, I think some of these big tech names are really they're coming and going. Yeah, like I don't see Apple anymore on here. Amazon started the day. The TQs, which is the short, which is the triple Q long, uh, but it's a sell there, so that that could be something. But yeah, no, you know what, Neil? There's just a lot of. I don't think it's a very huge open. For the imbalances. I'm only saying because Meta dropped like three bucks. Yeah, then that probably now. must, it must have been a sell. I do, again, it doesn't really matter, sells. but the market didn't really do much there, but Meta dropped in about three bucks, so it, maybe it might be able to get this. Like it might actually come down. Whoops, zoom, I want to zoom out there. There you go. It might actually have a chance to come down and test, you know, the Friday close area, late resistance right around that 12, 512 bucks. So that's always a possibility. Got to gear up. You got to be ready for it if it does happen. Oh, forgot about the chips. Uh, Intel, yada, 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 trend down. You guys all know what it looks like with only a minute to go. 37, probably not going to come in today. Still had that marked off from Friday. But the 36 and a half zone, the spike that it had late 
uh, morning, got back into 36 and a half, and then flushed for the rest of the day. I'd pl I'm playing that for resistance uh, today on INTC. Uh, Emmanuel talking about Nikola. Not really going to be looking at Nikola until the opening range has settled itself down. If we see NVIDIA 905, remember every time it's gotten a 905 in the last week, that has been a, well, last two weeks, I should say, that's been a fade zone for NVIDIA. So we'll be on the offer of Intel for any kind of a fade. We already talked about Tesla 68, Apple, I have 173.50. And then Meta, all of a sudden, seems like it's a possibility on a dip buy after that little bit of a sell. Going into the open on a Monday, and happy tax day to everybody. But more importantly, let's get this week started in three, two, and one. <laughs> I got I was I was planning on doing some taxes. I got I got it going on that. Really? <laughs> mm. We have time. in Canada it's different. We have plenty of time. We have, we have yeah, not plenty of time. I think we have a couple Only a couple weeks. weeks. Yeah, is that plenty? Mm -hmm. Um okay, so Google with a little bit of a drop down here off the open. We said that there was going to be um, you know, just a little bit of movement here off the open. So with Google coming in into 158, let's take a little bit more long here. Uh, you know, I, I like the trade. I've liked the stock. Obviously, this movement is not the greatest. Uh, we did have some of that political tension uh, this week, so or sorry, global tension. So we'll wait to see um, if that can settle itself out. I was actually pretty happy um, that the market wasn't absolutely destroyed coming in here today. So watch out for 157 coming in pretty quickly here for Google. We should look it back at our other stocks because we were looking for dip buy opportunities in these as well. Apple still holding up. Um, the other one we had was Google. We already in that. AMD and then Tesla. Sorry, that was the other name I was looking for. It's chilling. It, Tesla's chilling as well. So really it's just Google making a move down here for some reason. Uh, Apple, I mean, Apple could be giving something, but it's only at 175. So we've got to be patient with that. Uh, DJT. We did yeah. mention this one on the... Uh, DJ tanking? No, no, no. It's trying to bounce back into the 30 level. Okay. Uh, it's not, it's, I mean, it's now 10% down as opposed to 15% down, so it's making a move up. But I just want to wait for any kind of a curl situation. You needed to get into that 30 level. want to be very, very patient with it. Uh, we didn't mention Bitcoin, but I have to go over to Intel because that's actually popping as the market's falling. So the Nasdaq's coming in. Popping is a loose term. It broke the pre-market high, but it's up 1% when the NASDAQ has been coming back to 18.3. So I do want to take a shot at this one. Might have to short it off the pre-market high if it's not going to give a move into 36.5. But I've liked taking shots on Intel to the short side when we can. Yeah, the market's pulling back in. I mean, we're going to be 20 cents out right now on Google. I don't... Um I still like the trade. I'm not trying to stay away from this at any stretch. We didn't want to buy more 158s. I wanted to wait for it to get down into 157, but I like the story. We're only long here at 40s, so so far so good there. I mean, I love the Intel trade. We've talked about uh, that name being a short for a minute. Um, AMD did go upside. We were waiting for 168, but just look at this, everybody. We we got right into sort of Friday's you know, the teeth of the problem oh, uh, down there. Apple's tanking right now. I just got Apple shares. So this is, um, all right, we are long now at 174.05 with a decent amount here. We really like this position, 174 for Apple, but this came in pretty quickly. What's up, Adara? Coupang, CPNG, making new 52-week highs right off the open here. On Friday, reported that they're going to increase their membership fees this morning. They get an upgrade here and a price target increase from Citigroup. So nice move up here for CPNG, guys. Ooh, they're Apple yeah, with that one cent. I like 173 and a half as a support zone for Apple. It is now starting to come back in here. It was Friday's lows on oh. Apple. Oops, I was on the wrong chart there. If we get back into 174 half, that was the Friday low right there. Going to look to take some out as we get into that particular price. Tesla was the other we thought we'd have at the open. Oh, wow. I just missed. Uh, 168.40, it looks like Tesla bounced oh, off. No. I was sitting at 33. Oh, no. Oh, no. Was... We Larry Birded that one. Oh, and we are huge over here. Yeah, we should have gone to like the 40s uh, on Tesla instead. Oh, man. We are, we are huge again over here, guys. Um, we're going to go two for two monsters again, hopefully. Google right now is starting to rip up back up to the upside. We are now 40 cents. Let's see if that can get going. We actually took out a third of our Apple because I was like, huh? Um, I didn't think Apple would be down 1.5% here as the market um, it continues to make moves lower. So we get long at 174 as it was written on the sticky note. There's a 174.23, so we have a 23 out and a 31 out. So, so far so good here as we continue to rock and roll. 
just a little bit um, with this market. So I don't think it's like a crazy one yet. I still feel like we have some more upside to go. Here goes Google right back into here. If we can get like 159-ish uh, on this name, let's take advantage of that. We are long right now in this 30s for Google. We talked about it, and this is what I mean, about staying with names that you believe in. So we thought Google had this chance to go today, so we take it. We also take Apple um, trying to go. So only two names for me so far, um, and they're both pretty good. So we'll continue to hold on to this, go two for two here off the open uh, while we look for some more opportunities. I mean, uh, the other one that we had was AMD, and I'm not in the short yet of anything, but AMD has really come in. So it looks like we were looking right about the short there. Uh, most likely NVIDIA, I would think. NVIDIA is, is moving is down. making well. movements as well. So, okay. Oh, NVIDIA is down. Got, he hit 885. I did get a fill. Apple out in front of 174.40. So it is stair-stepping it to the upside. Was able to get a reload uh, as well on Apple. So if it gets maybe the next level, 174. Uh, 80s in there. If we do get a push into that price, we're going to take a little bit more out. So it is making a nice little bounce. AMD is now, I mean, okay. AMD is down at $160. Yeah. Crazy, huh? Yeah. That, this was, okay. 160 is the big support level on the daily. All right, I was thinking we'd be shorting some pops, and I'm in Intel, which is out of the money 10 cents, believe it or not. But 160 was a long zone that I didn't think we'd have any chance of getting to today, and we're gonna be staring that one in the face, so you gotta be able to adjust. Uh, so I'm gonna look for a 160 bounce on AMD. We've gotta be pretty local to that level. It is one and a half percent down and looking nasty here. So AMD continues to be the black sheep. Uh, well, you know what, Intel's been the black sheep, but yeah. it's not looking any better. Um, we are absolutely monstrous now. I don't know what else to do around here. 174, we told you with conviction, I hope, that um, our number one trade today was Apple. I mean, it's the number one listed trade on the sticky note. It is the number one stock for me here uh, today. But with Mr. Baglino leaving here, Tesla just comes all the way back in um, to 168. So we're long down here at 168. It was a level that we sort of talked about a little bit. I wasn't too sure about this on this news. So we'll take a little bit out. I did have a decent order there. Let's take something out as we um, wait to hear about what exactly this means. But we are really, really rocking. It is your first dollar club trade uh, right here. I actually don't even have Stream Deck open, but there it goes right now. It is your apple of the day uh, right now. Let's take another piece out. We're pretty good on this one, man. It was written down there on the sticky note. So we'll put it down there for that dollar up to 175. Need to take that profit uh, if you're gonna make it. So there it is, nice move there. Tesla, though, as we can all see, falling down. Google yeah, falling Tesla down. Tesla looking ugly. Yeah, it's really just Apple, man. Apple is the one uh, here that is really holding um, myself, quite frankly, uh, above water here because some of these trades are starting to go downside right now, including Tesla, including the market, starting to get a little juicy. But um, let's just hold out hope that we got it right with Apple at least. Yeah, Apple looking fine, but Tesla broke the low and I got taken out of that one. Rivian, I tried to short a pop. We're not getting that. Uh, Rivian just bounced off nine dollars and one cent, so again it continues to head lower. We'll try to short the pops in this one. We talked about this getting away from Rivian and trading uh, Lucid last week was a mistake. Rivian was the one. DJT still trying to break that thirty. He just wicked up their twenty nine eighty twice. twice huh? So fading that twenty nine eighty level, I think thirty is going to be the spot. Yeah, it looks again, like. Again. So the next time it comes up here, we'll look to short the pop on. DJT, the stock, if Apple doesn't hold on here, and I don't know what else is looking good, but the market is weak, yeah, weak, weak, weak. Meta, I mean, Meta's not quite down at that 512 level that I wanted to dip by. You gotta be patient with it. And as I said, Tesla, Tesla cranked through that 68. So I got out of it. I mean, we gotta wait for this one to calm itself down. Like right now it's looking pretty nasty uh, on a lot of individual names here. Yeah, the market's not necessarily doing too healthy here, is it? Um, all right, nice move down. I'm trying to find a level four Tesla. <coughs> We've already, remember, we, we, we thought we were in a little bit of trouble there early on Tesla, so we were able to get out of 20%. So we didn't take a huge position. I'm not sitting in these huge positions um, as the market does this. We've talked about sort of that new plan of action uh, for us, and that is to not get overly carried away 
um, you know, getting into things. So let's be patient with this if we can. Tesla right now, only out of the money, 40 cents, 50 cents. So it is getting worse and worse. Look at all these candles, man. A lot of sell action here into Tesla as we do have those job cuts. We do have senior VP leaving. I mean, it's definitely not a good thing here for Tesla. So, you know, not trying to sugarcoat this, but at the same time, um, it's pretty early and we don't necessarily want to roll over on this yet for me. Good out though getting out for sure because it's not stopping. Um, you know, I think 164 is maybe where we could end. So right into here, what is this? 167. Probably just dump it and, and just forget about it. If Whoa, it, if, if it, NVIDIA if just did a huge reverse. Upside? Yes. Okay. So like that's out. a $10 reverse. I just got taken out for 12 cents. Eh, it may be 13 on Intel is that could not hold that pre-market top range. But suddenly, NVIDIA is looking like, after, every time it does a reverse like this, I gotta be thinking longs on NVIDIA. It went from down a point to now up 1.2%, uh, looking for the level here. That's like 896 would be a breakout. If it can hold VWAP, that's 888. So first look, dip 888. And if it can hold that, look for longs off 888. And if it breaks 96, that should be a breakout long. But Tesla, you know, we got to slap the fail on that one. Apple's looking like a potential reload in here. But was able to get that 80 fill on Apple. Now we'll look to go in a third time. I like it to 173.50. So if it holds on to that level, I think we should be okay uh, on AAPL. But wow, that was a huge reversal on NVIDIA. When NVIDIA does that, you, you stand up and listen. Yeah, good look there. I... Um... 166.50, I'm gonna get out. We, took, we, just took, we just took the same piece we got out there, so we are giving this one more shot here um, for Tesla as it is not getting any relief whatsoever. I mean, this is coming rated. Like I said, generally speaking, I'd be sitting here like, what's going on, what's going on, just layering into this, but no. We got out 20% there, we put it back on, and here it comes in. We are gonna lose on this, so this will be a reverse dollar club winner, we'll lose. Right now, we're out a dollar on this name right now. So 166.50, I'm just gonna draw the line there. Thought maybe we could get a relief rally. It does not look like that at all as Tesla continues to move down. Um, as Neil said, if we're gonna get a move up uh, in Nvidia, maybe we can short some kind of a pop here on AMD. AMD, but it's all good. We bought more Google. We just bought some more down there at 75, trying to stick with the names and the sort of the trends um, that we know have been working. And that's the Google long. St sitting in front of this Tesla is more of a shot play here at 9.30, and right now we're getting shot. Um, so that, that's what's happening here for Tesla. Was that for Miss Adera? Yeah, yeah, let's go. Longever on here, LGVN trying to break the pre-market high up about 60% right now. Various insiders, including the CEO and director, buying shares, but also worth noting, this one is a really small float, about 1.35 million shares, LGVN, guys. All right. Hey, good look there. Thank I just you, said Apple's area. working, and then it just went down 30 cents. Like... Really? I don't know. Yeah, like you know, I just got out at the 50s. So now it's coming 50. back in. I don't know. Looks Market's okay. a little, little violent. But yeah, go ahead. I know. No, you I was going to say, on there. You know, Apple holding one, a half dollar above the 74. I think that one looks, it's the most calm. But the NASDAQ did just bounce. DJT just did this hammer candle. So I was willing to short it up here it off the 30 tough, level. But it oh, just did a it. big reversal candle. So when I see that kind of reverse, I'm going to give it to this local high. 29 and change. So 29 probably put it above the 20 level. Just want to be net short this one and give it a bit of a chance. Uh, what was I gonna get to? It was NVIDIA. Oh, NVIDIA is breaking 96 already. Well, that was fast. I okay. just, <laughs> NVIDIA has already broken 96. I put the dip buy in for the 88 and didn't put the breakout trade for the 96. We'll move off of this 88 level, start looking at the 90s for VWAP. So NVIDIA is absolutely on a tear. This is the strong one in today. Didn't really think, I mean, Apple's now the dollar in the money, so that's good. Yeah. That Ooh. goes to the upside. We might have missed our chance to get NVIDIA longs two or three minutes ago, unfortunately. Yeah, we did. Uh, we'll have to hit the fail there on um, Tesla. We should have stayed away from it. The problem is it was, it was our number two idea on here, but that is before, of course. And it's just an excuse, but it's before we had that news um, of senior VP um, Jeff Bagwell leaving. So uh, you can see up here, um, it's Hall of Fame, Jeff uh, yeah, Bagwell. Hall of Fame, Jeff Bagwell, and Craig Biggio as well uh, joining him there. Uh, but here we go. 
Uh, nice move upside for Apple. So there it is again. It is your number one trade idea and by far PL one as Neil and I both have this uh, on the day. Apple is just an absolute monster and my saving grace today is Apple because if we don't have, well, first of all, Google will be fine. I'll take another piece out of Apple right here. Uh, it's just Google hasn't been doing Holy anything, crap, so we really have to wait for it. What? It's Tesla is is what hit me. So that's it. We'll go two for three now uh, today with Apple. And I mean, Google, I guess, temporarily, it's only in the money a dimer right now. Um, we would have loved to get longer down there. Uh, we did. We got some 157.75s. Again, take profit early, average it in. We have, we've just been sitting in here waiting for said explosion to the upside with Google. We'll wait for that. I know you got stopped out a little bit there on Intel, but I think the short is, oh, okay, it's going in. You probably got out at a great price. Apparently, because. Rivian broke $9, and I didn't catch that. So. Rivian, Rivian down to $9? Yeah, so I missed I need a, Randy in here immediately. I missed a $9 break. Randy had some very positive. Some explaining to do. He had some positive things to say about Rivian last week. Not that it is what it is. Last but. week, man, this man has been saying some positive stuff since he says uh. $20. All right, I'm going to short back into yeah, 9 Randy. if we get it. Let's go. But Intel, like I said, sometimes you just got to get out of the way of it. When I, sh when I short a stock like this, now I have to zoom all the way out, there you go, it broke the local high, I just get out and then wait for the next level, which is 36 and a half. That'll end up being, obviously, it'll obviously end up being a good decision there to get out of it, but wow. Oh, we gotta yeah. get, we gotta oh, get into yeah. Rivian short on the first available pop. Apple continues to Ooh, run. I'm gonna trail this, if we can't hold 175, then I wanna get out of it, but it's also, we didn't get a shot at Meta, it held 514. If it curls off VWAP, the next move down could be our chance uh, to grab into some kind of a meta trade. But the missed opportunity on Rivian, we'll see if we can't get it somewhere, uh, somewhere back into that $9 level. Wow, no trading, no cry, baby. We've got Apple, and I mean, it is your number one sticky note name. So there it is right there, man. We'll just, uh, we'll just keep on looking at it. And again, this is why we put these notes out. I mean, here it is right here. This is the sticky note sent out today, nine o'clock. Here it is right here. Thank you for everybody for your patience uh, on that. There it is right there, 174. I like the level here. Believe that we're oversold um, on, on the weak iPhone demand. I, you know, I like the level. We called this Apple long down there at 174. We're about as patient as pie on that. And then we are paid off. So that's been a really, really good trade uh, so far here today is that one, um, the Apple long. And you know what else is happening right now? Just to, like I said, let's keep it a little undercover, if you know what I'm saying. Let's wait to see what happens here with Google, as this one is, uh-oh, we're getting a face slap on Google right now. This one going 30, 40, 50 cents in the money now. A dollar in the money on Apple, 50 cents in the money on Google. And trust me, this was another one. We really like this one as well. It's too bad we sat in this Google, in this Tesla trade, but you know what? If we're gonna be wrong about something, let's be wrong on a name that we know we've made money on. Tesla, but still, bad call there. We should, we should have, you know, we can do, I mean, we do lessons all the time, and Neil talks about this, but it's like right there, we had written it down, and then all of a sudden, something had changed in sort of the macro environment um, with Tesla, and that was enough to send here. I'm looking at Google because I'm getting out of that. Uh, that was enough to send it downside right now. So I, maybe we are starting to get washed out uh, of that trade right now, so there could be a long developing here sometime in Tesla. What's up, Adara? Not a single red candle right now so far today on the three minute for Spirit Airlines, S-A-V-E. Really nice look for this one. For forecasting higher than expected Q1 revenue and also saying that they ended Q1 2024 with $1.2 billion of unrestricted cash and cash equivalents. So very nice look so far today for S-A-V-E, guys. Save. Um, not a great look for DJT, down 13%. It's holding on to VWAP. That's actually the good news. So it did this hammer candle off 29, shorted after that underneath 29, got some out there in front of 50, going to get some out in front of 28. Then I'm looking for the low of the day there. I got out of Apple when it didn't hold the 175 on the way back in. I'm looking to rebid this one. Well, I'm looking to re I am rebidding this one in front of 174, looking for another pullback. But if it starts holding VWAP, and that's the way that it's headed up, then that's perfectly fine. When a stock is trending higher, you don't mind taking uh, higher lows for entry points. I think you want to stick with the trend. NVIDIA, yeah, let's just cancel getting bids in front of 888. I feel like that ship might have sailed for us. Got to look at VWAP here as well. But the market is, I mean, weak right now. And the short that I wanted 
We'll be, we might have a chance to get this one. So Rivian's starting to push back to the upside. If we can get something into VWAP here at the $9 level, we'll have to take a shot uh, at that. If you look at what's going on, we didn't even talk about Bitcoin, I think. Which is, you know. Not. No, I feel like we didn't really. But uh, Coinbase is the name within there that I wanted to be able to trade. It's been rejecting the 250 level a couple of times here off of the open. 54 is, uh, 54 is also a big level. I'm thinking fades on this. The 250 level actually looking quite good, but I had 54 marked off. To be patient or to take a shot at it off 50, I think I will go with the latter. It looks pretty good off this 50 level. Okay, we're reloaded. I mean, I'm trying to look at the same kind of names here. Um, we just bought some more Google uh, down there at 90 or so. Let's see if we can take something out at 8. As we are Scalp City over here. So let's see, let's go, let's go Google. Let's see if we can get up to the upside right now as we can continue. Yes, sir, yes, sir, there it is right now. Let's props that up for anybody that's scalping with your boy over here. Um, there it is right now. We have some lots of videos out uh, all about this and that's exactly what that was. A little bit of a pullback in on a super strong name. We will put PL one and two up here with Apple and Google and then PL one to the downside with Tesla uh, as that continues to go. Let's go, what's up to Dan McIsaac? What's up my guy? North Carolina representing up there with Mr. Mr. Dan McIsaac, shout out to P.D. Pablo as well. Um, okay, so uh, there's the move up. Good move by getting out of Intel because I was just, I'm looking at Intel and AMD and NVIDIA because here comes AMD. Wow, okay, but wait a second. Okay, Google, oh, sorry, it was chasing P&L oh, there Amazon's again. gone. Um, but there we go, AMD's, Amazon's gone. Okay, so a lot of these names starting to get going to the upside here. So let's go, let's get going on all these other names is what we need right here. Um, AMD, Amazon, you mentioned good level that wow oh man oh boy oh man oh man uh right now we continue to go upside on this one man welcome to the jungle guys the market's up 0.75 percent what is goldman sachs doing uh right now Okay, wow, we mentioned that there was a possibility of them getting up to that 420 level. We didn't get too far away from that, man. 412 and change, nice little $8 move up straight off the open and a pull back for Goldman Sachs, but still up that 5%. Look, I'm getting a little excited here. I mean, Google just kept on going back to the upside there, now touching in the mid-teens again. I do have to address this because I do have some decent amount of shares. As you guys can see what we've been doing, thank you for VWAP, so come back in. Uh, nice take to the upside. Noticing the market was relatively weak before some of these names started taking off. So maybe we do have something here. Let's try to hold on to Google. Man, this could be a good one uh, today. G-O-O-G-L-E looking to make a move higher here. Rivian as well, yeah. Neil's been Rivian it, Rivian's not been looking at that. Yeah, Rivian's not to the upside. Neither is Lee Auto, which flat bottom broke uh, that support level down underneath 29. Now, obviously on the daily chart, this is not exactly $29. 29.15 is that low but you know what it's doing right now, which is consolidating underneath that flat bottom break. So currently, it just popped 20, right into 29.15. That is the exact level on the daily that we just showed you as a support level. So I wanna be short this into that. Uh, DJT just broke 28, so we're about 80 cents in the money on that. Uh, check that at dollars, that continues to flush. Looking for 27s on DJT, see if we can't get that out there. But I wanna be in Lee Auto short. Uh, if we get filled in the off. And I'm again canceling offers on Rivian as it's now at $8.80. What is going Rivian on with Rivian? Is just, Rivian's just dying in why? here. Why, why, why? Oh my goodness, because it's Rivian. Yeah. Uh, Lucid's not really doing anything. This is just a Rivian story. And yeah, NVIDIA is about to break sucks. 900. Man, this Rivian trade really is garbage. 900, um, 900 uh, NVIDIA. What, and NVIDIA's 900 again? Okay, uh, this could be another big trade. I mean, Rivian just continues to go up. I mean, we've talked about this one as a buy all of the dips as much as possible, um, but we didn't do any of it. Nice move in for uh, NVIDIA. Adair has got something. The only note I'm seeing right now on Rivian is a price target cut from Evercore ISI from $25 to $20. Also worth noting, I am seeing some speculation that this could have to do with the overall move down in EVs off of that Tesla job cut news. So RIVN with a price target down, uh, downgrade, guys. Well, that stock is basically one gigantic downgrade at this particular point because it's yeah. Rivian. It's, they're a dog. So... You know, like oftentimes you're looking for dip buys and when a stock is really strong, you're just not going to get them. Uh, I did not take the breakout famously, not famously, but I did not take the 96 break. 
on NVIDIA, that was a mistake. It just broke the 900 level. Scalp the first buck, and we'll see if it gets to the 905. Remember, 905, despite being also being a decent cool area code, 905 has been a resistance the last couple of weeks on NVIDIA. To me, if it gets there, trades above it are a separate story. So let's see what happens. I mean, the stock has been trending up. When it does this liquidity grab underneath and then push higher, that's usually very, very bullish. So we're long NVIDIA now. DJT is falling apart. I am now in Lee Auto, which, uh, I mean, if the, if the EV names are going down, this one was already under pressure. Lee Auto, short, giving it to 29.20. Just realized I don't have a stop order in there to protect myself. So let's just get a stop in on Lee Auto and then move on back to NVIDIA, which is tearing to the upside. Give me that 904. I want 904 half uh, into that 905. Good, good. Yeah, nice trade right there for NVIDIA. Um, all right, so let's just keep on uh, doing it. We'll watch for NVIDIA. I went over there. It's sort of the opposite. We have a big trade here on Google, um, which we talk about all the time, so we'll wait for that. Um, here comes AMD. I think this is probably, let's start the short. Oh, no. Uh, all right, this is going to be a very, very small position here uh, at 164 just to see what happens. So let's give it a shot right now for AMD uh, for the possibility of a break back down. I was waiting at 164.50. I mean, you know, hand to God, but unfortunately we missed that as it comes all the way into there. Um, we'll see if we can get that short if it comes back to the upside there for AMD. Uh, but there it is, man. We'll see if we do get a panic mode sell. But right now, um, P&L number one, and it's, again, not even close on the show here, will be Apple. Apple was a monster. We just got a 175.50 print. That one, when that 174 came in, man, we were waiting there with open hands. Uh, so that was a good one. Uh, it's a good thing we panicked out of Tesla. But then Google's right there as well. I mean, this one we still have about half of the position on because we've reloaded that half of our reload position uh on right now 165 by the way for tesla down four and a bit uh right now so tesla not having um sorry four dollars in a bit down three and a half percent starting to go lower and lower so from when that 169 open well i guess my bad i guess we're down five bucks we opened at 170 i thought we opened 169 ish uh but there it is now tagging lower uh as we go let's go man let's spin it again for another one as we'll put amd on the board for 50 more cents right there coming back in on amd and on nvidia yeah, and coming back into the low of the day, well, it's flush on Lee Auto, is that's back underneath 29. We're looking for that low of the day for our first out, and then maybe some continuation to the downside. DJT, we shorted that little curl off to 29, took some out VWAP, now I'm looking for the 27 level. Obviously, 27 showed some support right before the open. It was stair-stepping into the upside. The stock can go squeezing. It is down 15%, so it's short sell restricted, oftentimes looking for some kind of a bounce when it does that. But right now, we're about a buck 30 in the money. The risk to reward was just too juicy. When it does a hammer, a wick like this at that 29 level, generally speaking, going to short the even level down when we're looking for a short. So we said DJT, we wanted to short the pop. We are able to get it. NVIDIA did make the curl. It touched 904.20, came back in. I had the trailing stop on it, so we took our profit. I'll look for VWAP or 900. Those look like, that's 895 or 900 for some dip buys on VWAP. And Rivian, this one might have completely gone away. I think... You know, now you have to calm down and wait for it to set up some kind of a short off of VWAP or $9. It's just going to have to pop, or we're not going to be involved in a Rivian short today. I'm not going to be just hitting the bottoms, oh my God. even though we wanted it. Oh, man. I mean, Travolta's like, I... I mean, there it is again, right there, man. We just put this one on the board as well. Another one uh, coming through right there for us on that. Where is DJ there? There he is. Um, all right, so there comes AMD right down to 163. I mean, right back in to those levels. If you want to take this profit, this ain't a bad spot to do that. So let's put a bit out, see if it can fall back in just a little bit. But there it goes. Nice downside push there for AMD. Uh, we just shorted that. There it goes again. The sticky note is undamn defeated uh, right there. We'll fire it off one more time uh, for everybody. There it goes, man. Google, I'm going to go get another coffee. Google right now, um, nice move in. I mean, 
I really got to get that Obi thing working out there. Uh, thank you so much, Kevin Mendoza. Sean right here has beast mode activated. Yeah, it's been for a minute right now. Uh, remember I said I was going to take some time off? Yeah, that's not happening. Uh, so we'll just keep on shorting, 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 and longing, longing, longing. As right now, we have Apple uh, long, 70 cents. Google, 70 cents in the money. AMD just covered. Obviously a mistake there on the cover, but hey, what can we do? Um, Tesla continues to march lower through 164. I appreciate you, Kevin, uh, on there. And then by the way, you know what else we've absolutely nailed today? Palantir. I mean, we talked about, I mean, we exactly wrote it down. Palantir has a chance to get going here today. There's no doubt about it. So we were confident that it was going up, but we waited for this high break and it just hasn't come yet, 23.30. Huge, huge move really for Palantir, which was negative. Basically up 2% uh, there from the open is Palantir. So we nailed that one. And by the way, Google coming back up to its day high again, uh, one more time. I mean, the reloaded stock. We've traded four names for you today. Apple, PL one AMD, we just took 75 cents, now $1.50 in the money. Google, come on, PL2, Tesla, horrible uh, to the downside. So we'll go three for four here, be green, and let's just hope that uh, the rest of this day will be as profitable as you know last week was. So, so far, so good today, 10 o'clock. Uh, right now. So. Yeah, and just do you. Like, that's the sort of thing. Like, have your levels, have your trades. Um, took a hit on Intel, but it's half of what we had for the win on Apple, half of what we had for the win on NVIDIA, a third of the win we have on DJT. So it's all about risk to reward. And I'll short Tesla Intel a second time. I'm not short Tesla. Wish I was short Tesla. We all wish we were short Tesla this morning. But if we break yeah. this 35.5 level, 36.5 level, 5.5, I should say, 36.55 from Friday. That's the resistance level we wanted. We tried that old pre-market high, did not work out. As all of a sudden, Intel up that 2.2% is bucking the trend a little bit. But Lee Auto's working just fine. I'm trailing DJT. We might be able to get a dip by uh, in Apple here one more time off 174. But I took the money and ran at 175 and it couldn't go any higher. Now we'll look to reload off of support. Apple down 1% and really actually relatively weak. Let's go to Adara. Some numbers coming in here. We already got the two key numbers here. Business inventories month over month coming slightly higher than expected. 0.4% uh, versus 0.3% consensus of forecast. NAHB housing market index coming exactly as expected here. 51 compared to the previous of 51 in the consensus and forecast of 51. So exactly in line. We just got here as well the last number at 10 a.m. Retail inventories X autos month over month coming in again exactly in line with forecast and consensus. So 0.4% to the upside here. SPY right now trading up about 0.8%. Definitely chopping and turning a little bit for the last couple of three minute candles. A couple individual names to keep in mind here. We talked about um, having some of those Goldman Sachs earnings this morning, but we also had Charles Schwab earnings. SCHW here up about 4.2% at having a sales beat here at inline earnings per share. Also announcing a 20% year over year increase in total client assets. And the last name here to talk about Meta up about over 1% after a very positive note and price target of 590 here coming from Citigroup. So nice look for META guys. Yeah, definitely a good look for Meta. They had that weird sell right before the open, which you know, it was right when the imbalances came. Oh, bye bye. Nvidia just took out the highs. Apple's starting to hold VWAP in here. Oh, yeah. Just want to move my trail a little bit tighter on DJT because it looks like it's catching a bit of a bid. But wow, Nvidia just took out the top. So forget about VWAP. It looks like it's going to hold that 900 level after all. I'm going to check out AMD. No, not breaking the top yet, but it's finding a way. Uh, Tesla. 165 would seem to be like it's holding. Whoops, I went too far there. 165 would seem like it's holding, but 160 is the only support on the daily chart. 165, good psychological level every five bucks. But I see nothing when I zoom out there for its own support. Dell, shout out to you, the Schmirking, and Liam in the chat noting that Dell is super strong. But I don't want to get away from the names that we're trading here. I want to be very, very patient. Uh, looks like we're going to get AMD taking that high of the day as NVIDIA continues. I wanted to buy the dip. We're not going to get VWAP there. We'll look for VWAP on Apple as NVIDIA. No, th almost 3%, so 3x what the market is doing. We'll see if we can find another long here for you guys. Looks like the 900 level could be it. Man, I really like this put up or shut up strategy uh, we have right now because there's Google again uh, right now coming in. So big time, big time. 
uh, right now coming through. So we really like that one. Uh, Google, we just took another couple pieces out right now. Um, okay, so we're gonna go over and have a quick look to see what's going on. Tesla up here at 166. I'm thinking about a short now um, of Tesla in and around this level. So let's see if we can get that. Uh, whoa, okay, now starting to tank. All right, um, just, just because of the movement in the market here, if we do fade out um, on Tesla, now we don't wanna be a whole heck of short right now. 167 up to VWAP is where we'll get out. So maybe, maybe we are shorting the bottom here. I don't, I don't know, maybe, uh, for Tesla. But I want to get into something. I still like that AMD, but then like, as I hear Neil sort of talking about how, how, how continued strength in NVIDIA is, makes me think that potentially, oh, here, sorry, I'm supposed to be on Tesla. Maybe it makes me think that potentially we uh, want to stay away from the chip names and just go over to something that we know is weak. Unfortunately, Tesla did announce uh, the cutting of the labor force there, about 10% of their workforce. That's pretty nasty, I guess, for the signs of, I'm trying to talk my way into this just a little bit right here. It's just, I thought it was gonna be a good sign, but then I'm just guessing that some of these names that they're losing here um, are a little bigger than maybe what the market had or what the street had thought. Uh, potentially, maybe it was just plant workers and whatnot, but it seems like they're not I only- I don't know who that guy is, but- Yeah, well, no, senior <laughs> VP it was. But I mean, we, it's, not, it's not the name we'd heard before. No, no, but of course not. I mean, you don't, you know, senior VP of- Yeah, that's one Name your say. favorite company, like yeah. you don't know the senior VP. So, I mean, it's just like, I'm just saying that like, as the cookie crumbles, like I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping for success in Tesla because we are an investor there. But you know what's happening right now? See ya. Um, that, this, is, this, is, this is what it's about. Change, have the ability to sort of change it up. Now, I don't know if this is gonna win or lose, but we'll just take 40 cents right there on that move down in Tesla and start to put it back up. Today, over here on this side, we raised the trophy again, uh, but we gotta wait to see if we can hold on to that because Tesla is definitely waking itself up immediately uh, right now. So here we go again, Tesla upside move. A dollar in the money for Apple and Google, and when those are your number one and two trade ideas, uh, Tesla was, was, was on there then we gotta be happy with that. So there goes uh, Apple, huge move again. We did miss that reload. Google's huge, Apple's huge, and Tesla is trying to figure itself out. Let's take another fill uh, here at 50, and then we'll wait for that 165, and then maybe we get that. Yeah, we're chilling at this point because the market's red. The last three candles on a 15 minute for the NASDAQ. DJT tagged that 27 level. You'll see it right here. It wicked, if we're getting in because it wicked 29, we're getting out when it wicks 27. That was our target area. It just slammed underneath 27, trailed it, came right back above. So it's about a dollar 80 move in a $2 range. So that one is gonna be good. I still think it's an overall short, but we'll look at VWAP off 28. And then just do you. We waited for Intel to get back into the upside, waited for the 36 and a half. We took the first short off, the, off of this level and it just sort of took out that local high. Once we shorted off the local high, we're gonna get right out. Got to adhere to your stops. You just took some out at VWAP. Now I'm looking for the pre-market breakout price. Where we started the short before is the next target to the downside where I wanna take more of it out. And Lee Auto, how often do we do we look up some of these names in the upgrades and downgrades and don't really have a trade? With Liotto, it was different. Liotto was a flat bottom break on the daily chart. It took that level out, 29.15, pulled right back in and gave us a short at 05. And we're giving it just above that 15 level. So we're looking short here. I want to continue with it. I, I want to get back over to NVIDIA at some point. But you look at the market, ES pulling back after a nice pop to the upside. You saw the NASDAQ try to break back out, then afternoon resistance got rejected. So if we end up with some kind of a short morning where we give up the gains, I feel as if I haven't seen a green candle on my 15 minute. I don't want to be rushing back over to the longs just yet. I think there's going to be some good opportunities with the longs. And at this point, if you weren't looking at a name and it's suddenly relatively strong or relatively weak, you'll want to note that Amazon Looking, relative, looking relatively strong. It might have just rejected the pre-market high, but up 1% into a NASDAQ that's like half a percent. It's trying to hold on to a higher low. If it can hold VWAP, this looks pretty enticing uh, for a long trade. So I'm going to add that to the bucket. I was, I was there on Apple, but we did not catch that VWAP trade. So Apple's starting to look a little bit better as it's putting in another higher low. Like it's doing the same move from 74 into 75, but just with a higher low. I gotta go over to Intel, because that just popped down. So 
whether I get 15s in here, once it breaks 20s, got to get our next level. And that's sort of the thing. Like, if you, if you like a stock to the south side thinking it will have a pop and fade, just because it doesn't work at the first level, if you get a second shot at it at a big resistance level, the trend is your friend. And when the, trend's, when the trend is down on a stock, you generally want to be shorting uh, key price levels. So that's all we did here with Intel. It was super strong, now busting into the teens. I'm just going to get on the bid here, see if I can't get some 17s and ring the register back on INTC, one of our faves. All right. Um, yeah, this is... Uh is once again becoming a pretty big day here, guys. Apple, um, nicely done right there. We'll take some more out at 175 as it just came back through that level as the market really starting to come through right now. Uh, we'll take out another piece of Google. Unfortunately, we have some good outs at the highs. I mean, look, to take a dollar and worry about that, you know, that's one of those 99 problems again. Uh, here comes Tesla. I mean, we, we flipped up our game plan, man. We talked about that. This was the latest trade that we put on. So again, unfortunately, uh, we need to get a new graphic, but this is another one for you here on Tesla. So let's get to the downside and see if we can hold that 165. I mean, I'm bidding 165.11 right now. See if it will fall into us. And here it comes and there it goes right there. Let's props it up. That's another dollar club. So we'll see if it can break through now 165 and get lower. Uh, on this one. Shout out to Kevin Mendoza and everybody that's rocking with me now today because we have two stocks right now that are a dollar in the money. This one was just put on five minutes ago. So there goes Tesla to the downside. Apple just continues to work. This is your number one trade idea of the day. And I mean, that one's really been working out. The market's really coming in now. Uh, potential to look at the NASDAQ right now because that's what we've been doing. Uh, we've been trading the TQs pretty good. We've been trading the SMH uh, pretty good as well. So let's have a quick little look to see what we got. Um, um, on a longer time frame here. Again, it, you're still in the middle. We talked about 18.4, that, you know, that's nowhere near there today. We open up 18.350, had the chance to get to 18.4. That's that Google 160, some of those break levels, Apple 175, you know, whatever, all those sort of breaking levels. We're at Apple 175 right now, but um, there it comes, so that's moving in. So I feel like, again, on a move down, 18.2, we gotta look at. Because if you can break there and hold below, then yeah, this is going to turn red today, the NASDAQ. And we're getting pretty damn close to that right now. So here comes 18.2. Let's just hold on to the short. It's really, it's really cranking now um, on the short side. So, so far, so good on that one. But it's Apple uh, holding up highs right now. I don't know if there's anything else. You had NVIDIA before. Amazon was, no, no, NVIDIA just cracked 900 without okay. a bid. Amazon is taking out VWAP. So that's starting to look a little bit weaker than it was. And again, you don't, like I said, I'm not rushing into the dip buys on these stocks. I think you want to see some kind of a bid. Just, I still see no green on the NASDAQ. It's falling like an absolute rock as we speak. Uh, Google was okay. The one that we didn't look at was Microsoft. And wow. even Microsoft is trying to take out these bottoms at 424. So it's looking pretty rough out there uh, for some of these tech stocks. Ooh, here's a little bit of a bounce in Rivian. All right, this might be a shot for this to get back into VWAP. Uh, DJT is making a bounce as well into VWAP. So both of these names that are weak, we're looking for fades back into VWAP. I'm going to get an offer out there on Rivian. We haven't been able to short this one today. Uh, Intel still looking good. Lee Auto bouncing a bit. And, oh, yeah, Coinbase at oh, 250. No. Forget about it. Yeah, remember 250? We're not getting 250 again. It was a double top. We threw the offer thinking we'd get a chance off of VWAP. It. Now we're down at 243. So Coinbase taking it on the chin here. Uh, we didn't really look at Bitcoin in particular. Even this is starting to break some support. Remember, on Friday, it was a huge bounce, like liquidity vacuum bounce. If we take out that low, you could see another one of those on IBIT. I like that reversal play. If you get a huge volume candle on Bitcoin up or down, I kind of like that reversal. So I'll be on watch for something similar to what we saw on Friday. All right, guys. Um... I just want to say something. So today, again, the reason why this is important is because I want, I want to talk to you guys. You know, one of my very first trades today, we had lost there on Tesla, okay? But we stayed in our lane. We stayed believing what we thought in the market, okay? And today, again, despite us having a rough start, will be another one of those big days. So, um, you know, it's just one of those things where stay there, stay where you are, Trust the names that you have. Trust your feelings. And as Neil says, man, know what you do best and just keep on going back to it. 
You know, if you are a closing trader, a spread trader, um, something like that, know what you do, stick with it, and um, just, just look at the results. They speak for themselves, and that's, that's the most important thing. So we went over to Tesla again, although we had the bad read, we sort of talked about that. We went back and shorted it. We shorted it twice, actually. Uh, that's how much we liked it. So we got two fills there at 166. We were gonna wait for, we talked about where we'd possibly get out here, 167. So it's just in the money a dollar, but it's, it's a great trade for me anyways, because we flipped it up. So again, have that ability to do that. So we'll make back a little bit of what we lost. We had more shares here so far um, on this move, so we will still be red on the name. And we're only out right now 60% of this trade. So 20, 40, 60. So we just took a piece out right there at 165 flat. Let's see if it continues to go lower. I, I've spread this out a little bit and looked, and I think that 164 would be an, an, an area. So we'll look to see if we can get some strength in and around 164 here on Tesla. So that's an area for me to be somewhat concerned about. So I have a bid down there trying to cover some at 164. We may or may not get there. I'll, I'll try it again to short more if we can get up here. But for right now, here it comes back in. I am bidding 164.26. And again, what's going to be another big day. Um, and we'll do the leaderboard after, but I congratulate guys behind us. It's been a big day uh, for a lot of traders. Let's just see if we can continue uh, the rally in the market and in some of these names. But um, this rally off 18.2 is only 30 to 40 handles. So let's see if um, maybe we short some of these pops. Yeah, the thing about the market rallying is you've had a oh, couple no, of names that are strong, but oh, okay. I'm just in two things Lee short, Lee auto short, and Intel short. Uh, we're out of DJT. Okay, apparently we refresh it. That'll come back in the next fill we have. So we could have the first there. potential green candle yeah. if we get any kind of a pop here in the NASDAQ. And whether or not that's going to cause a bigger rally. You've got higher lows on Apple off of VWAP. I think that gives you an opportunity. Uh, Amazon, we were mentioning, want this one to hold VWAP. It's actually consolidating underneath VWAP, unfortunately. Oh, don't tell me Reddit broke. Actually, didn't pay for locates, did I? No, it hasn't. No, Reddit hasn't broken 40 there. Uh, to top V VoIP, RDT is a flush time below 40. I agree with you on that one. We just haven't broken 40 yet on Reddit. I'm pretty sure this was... We lumped this one in with uh, DJT, although there was actual news with DJT, but it's consolidating under right. a fresh low there and could go. break the $40 level. I think we're going to, you know what, I should have paid for locates to be ready for this. If Reddit takes out 40, I do want to be there. Uh, it's probably fractions of a cent for us at Real Trading to be able to pay for those locates. Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe a oh, yeah, no, we, we, I tried it last week. It was very, very cheap. Let's check. Whatever it is, is very, very cheap. Okay, new position alert, so you can see that is right. So now the position board is right. Again, we're long Amazon. I mean, we'll sit here and look at it for as long as we want to, but at the end of the day, we didn't get the best price. I should have been waiting down here at 187.20. Instead, yes. we're long yeah, again right, right now at 187.50. Yeah. So here it goes. I, I mean, it is another one, one more time. We'll say we get Mark. happy fruit salad uh, to everybody right now. But it is starting to make a move back up to the upside right now. Uh, as there it is, the position board is correct, I guess. Lee it's, Auto. No. Oh, I'm, you still have more. Okay, well. Oh, we have free. Um, here we go. So Lee Auto right now. And then uh, Neil also. You're only in one in, position. You also have Intel. Yeah, it's all, I'm still in Intel and Lee Auto. And we have, we have free locates on Reddit, actually. Um, we can go short that one for free today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's been pretty good for us, Reddit. I yeah. The, so, I mean, sometimes with new IPOs or newly added stocks, you know, you can't really go short on them right away. I think that's a good sign for us. Uh, there was something else. NVIDIA, NVIDIA. We'll get to that one in a second on Reddit. So if it does break 40, I can just punch short. Uh, or just put a stop order for it. Now you're getting back above VWAP and holding the 900 level on NVIDIA. I do not want to be shorting this when it does one of those hammer candles unless it's off 905, 910. So let's see it hold VWAP here. It was a huge move down before it was able to battle back. I just want to see it hold on to that 900 level. As I said, Reddit will have to break 40, maybe something at VWAP. I'll keep my eye on that one for a fade. DJT. It could be, it's possible we're one and done with this. It is SSR. Whether or not it comes back in to give a short off the 30 level or the 29, no worries. You can be patient with it. I think the flush off the open was the play once it showed you the hammer candle. You didn't have to sit out in front of this one. You could just wait patiently to get into it. Yeah, BTC is working down, but Coinbase is nowhere near where we want that bad boy. And Meta, 
I mean, Meta bounces off 512, still looking weak. We want it off of Friday's low. It got relatively close. I mean, three and a half dollars, I suppose, isn't that close uh, to Friday's bottom. Maybe we should be a little bit more patient with that. I mean, I'm probably not going long four dollars off support on Meta, but it is trending into that level. So that's one that we could find ourselves in a bit of a bid. Uh, James Price is watching AMC. I probably won't be looking at AMC. It's Rivian I want. Uh, it's, it's NVIDIA that will be playing some. DJT may be at that 29 level again. Reddit in here uh, as well with a potential breakdown at that $40 level. So let's be patient. Don't have to force ourselves back into anything just yet. Yeah, and as Neil was mentioning, unfortunately, the position board is incorrect. So uh, we have Don't long work. Apple. We have long Amazon. We have long Google. Right now, we have short Tesla right now as well. So we'll, 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 we'll get that all fixed up for you guys. Uh, but right now, that's what we have. So we're quite busy with four positions now, two long, two short, sorry, one short, three long. The short, of course, is in Tesla. Let's talk about that trade. So if we can get more shares, we'll do that in and around. I mean, I just put it at 166.50, kind of like VWAP. I was gonna give it to 167, possibly there. So that was going to be like my area of concern, if we are concerned, which I'm not, but that, that's sort of where I would be on that one. So we'll wait to see uh, if we do get stopped out around 167, looking to get more short around 166.50. If it pops up there, I, I mean, I'm not sure. So that's Tesla as that's going. And then the newest position for me is Amazon. Look, I really like the story with Amazon. I, I, if there's going to be a name, we talked about buying dips in Google. We put that on the board and that has been a monster for me. So let's try to do the same thing with Amazon. We have a nice base here at 187. So let's just try it. We're in a very, very starter position right now. So if Amazon does come in, I want to get a little bit more at 40s, which looks like it's going to come in. Um, and then that bottom's 24, 25. So I'll put something in and around. And again, we, I don't, this is what's changed for me. I'm not standing in front of like, you know, falling swords here. If Amazon doesn't want to work, fine. Don't, then don't work, right? I mean, I'm not going to wait for 186. I think it's right now. Like we've been doing, okay, there it goes. Mark comes here. Mark comes to save the day. Right. Um, I'll, I'll, listen, production team, all I saw was it not working for 20 minutes. Mark, Mark walked, walked on, stage. on the stage. He went over there. He Excuse me, the story's not over yet, Ramin. You can come on if you want. Um, <laughs> Mark walks on the stage, speaks to them, walks off, then the next note I get is position boards working. Oh, look, it's just one of those, when you're doing deductive reasoning in a situation like that, and if that's not true, then fine. You want to make sure that your, your thought process is correct. And nine times out of 10. I don't care wherever it is, who fixed it? No, it doesn't matter. Ramin? Okay, so after refreshing it 14 times, that's, where, that's what fixed it. Okay. All right, well, either way, they're correct. No. It's correct now. But uh, I'm finally in a Rivian short. We just got that one. Apple's trying to hold on to VWAP. I want to give that to the 174 uh, half area. We liked 173 half, but now I'm going to go to 174 uh, half on Apple, see if it can hold on. Uh, Rivian fading off of, it would be VWAP, but it's telling me that 882 is the resistance price, so we're now shorting that. Uh, yeah, so it's basically the only new positions was back into Apple and yeah. then short in Rivian, uh, as you guys can see there. NVIDIA not doing a heck of a lot. We did want to go, we wanted to get met if we, if we could, but that, nothing's happening on that one. I do see, you guys let me know when we're ready. It's 1020, but I haven't heard the note just yet uh, for Adara. You guys let me know. Um, okay, so we, uh, we're, we're dug into Amazon, but Amazon is coming back in, so watch out for a 187 break right now on Amazon. We're long at 17s, so here it comes back in, Amazon breaking through 187. So this is not going to be part of the small cap recap because Amazon ain't no small cap, but it is starting to go to the downside right now. So let's see if it can hold out here and yep, go over can. to the, de uh, to the uh, board with Adara. Russell 2000 actually down on the day right now. IWM, here's the three minute. As you can see, we did have that sort of a topping tail candle in the previous candle, now trying to break below previous support. So bit of a move to the downside here for IWM. In terms of small caps making moves, we have Longevron, LGVN. This one currently up about 
62% uh, following a couple of insider buys, including from the CEO and the director of the company. Also worth noting, they have a pretty small float, about 1.35 million shares. We also have Piedmont Lithium, PLL is the ticker for this one, getting a mining permit approval for C Carolina Lithium and up about 35% on this news. Last but not least here, SPCB, this one is uh, super calm. This one up pretty significantly, over 50%. Not seeing any specific news on this one, but it is an Israeli-based company, so it could be geopolitically related here, guys. Good look there. And look, there's been some small caps that you've really been able to uh, take advantage of. I just want to... Just want to note one of them, because I know uh, I was getting, he well, not heckled's the wrong word. Uh, we were notified oh, yeah. of like, Boosa's big movement, but watch out for that. Like, this one was a runner on Friday, small cap oil name. It just gave up the $2 level. I would anticipate if it was good back at 160 before, it might be good there again. As mentioned, the new position for me was Short Rivian and Long Apple off of VWAP. Apple getting back into 175 uh, even. It's been rejecting 175.20, so back into that level, we want to make sure we're taking some profit uh, on Apple. Again, it's been strong. Anytime you're making higher lows, last I checked, that's good for longs anyways. Um, and Apple's one of the few things doing that. I checked at Meta, doing the absolute opposite. I checked over to Microsoft, doing the absolute opposite uh, as well. So long Apple starting to work out again off of VWAP. Short Rivian down 4% because Rivian has been down every single day. Uh, for the last little bit. So we shorted the first available pop. That wasn't until it was already down 4.5% to the downside. Lee Auto also working back in the money as we reloaded it off of that 29.15 uh, level on Lee Auto. So looking for the short back into the bottoms. I know, I know uh, obviously Neo took out $4 and some people are looking at that name. Lee Auto got the downgrade and took out a key level. That's why the interest in Lee Auto over Neo for probably the first time ever. I think this is the first time. I've looked at those two and decided it was Lee Auto to trade. Hmm. So we actually got out of half of our Amazon there, believe it or not. It went right, like it went nicely into the money. Like I have no idea what's up with this stock. Uh, you're going to be able to see right here. Look at these fills. 23, 24, 20, 30s, 30s. Like here it goes back to the upside again. So I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. This was by far the biggest position, period, like um, today by far like if you if you go nominal wise this this position was the biggest so i have to um start to slowly get this out because it was wrong like it fell into it we got a lot of shares down here at 180 we're going to be net positive on the stock if i just get it all out right now but we did get some out because we wound up having it just fell through like it came in a little too quickly there and we just got really lit up so we wound up getting a lot there but our out was always 187 break a couple pennies under that thankfully um, really thankfully that didn't happen. So now we are out of more than half as we've retraced back up here on Amazon. This, I still, I mean, I really like the stock, but not enough um, to hold for as many shares uh, as we had there against what is a market that's under VWAP, that's under the 50 period, that really is trending, you know, southbound. For me to be able to sit there and just load up, and it's going to work. We're net positive. We have one losing trade today, Tesla. That's it. Um, but, uh, you know, after that, we're trying to watch out for Amazon. So the NASDAQ, again, trying to get back to the upside as Amazon's in the 20s again. So let's see if we can take another piece, but hopefully we can battle. The NASDAQ right now holding that 18-2. There it goes. Oh, hell yes, sir. Let's go, Amazon. There it goes, putting another number up putting up more digits for everybody. Make sure you hit the like and the subscribe uh, as today has been another decent day and it's only 10.30 right now. So follow the vertical. Huh? What does that mean? Oh yeah, there we have the vertical stream in, yeah. uh, in that as well. Go over to at Trader It's TV super Live. cool. Scan that. I think it takes you everywhere it needs to go. Whatever you happen to like. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can consume it and we also have been... Right, you also have the dashboard, which is up, which will show the positions. Today is one of those days. Like, it's really just Tesla is the only, Tesla was the only problem. There you go. You can see the positions. Those are, just double checking, they are correct. Uh, Apple long, the prices are good. So, hey, all systems go. I wonder if that was right the whole way as well. I don't know. What does my Amazon price say? Uh, yeah, it's incorrect. Eh, well, it mind. doesn't matter anyway. It, no, it doesn't matter. Are right. The positions are right. Before we... It's like 10, it's almost 10.30. We're going to get into crypto in a quick little second there. But um, Goldman Sachs reported that they make a bunch of money. 
and it was a good, it was three of the four. They essentially beat on everything, but they're starting to sell back off. I was looking at the $400 level for a potential bounce play, and we're starting to get a little bit close. So would like to see what the market is doing and chilling at that moment when it gets there. Intel, we're able to get it back after the initial loss. It's consolidating under VWAP, looking for a breakdown to the low of the day. Might be a VWAP, a VWAP short if the market holds on to weakness here, but we'll play that as it comes. Don't want to rush into it. NVIDIA, we took one trade on NVIDIA, which was a 900 break. Should have been the 896 that we were talking about, but you know, we mentioned it and then didn't get my order out. I went over to another name at that time, took the 900 break. Now we just need to see some kind of a hold of VWAP and then show me some strength in NVIDIA and we can get back on over to it. Lee Auto, just reviewing some of the trades here. We're able to get some out 29s there on a reload, looking for the low of the day as that continues to take the stairs to said downside. Uh, we definitely got some out on Apple there on the VWAP reload, but this is a different trade from long in front of last week's support. So we'll get 173.5 wouldn't carry this all the way down to 173 and a half. I'd get out the 174 half, then look for another entry point on Apple. We do want to be taking, it's going to stair step up. You want to take multiple entries if you can, if it never gets back down into the bottom. So Apple's looking pretty strong. I think it looks good. Tesla, what do we just see? Tesla to the moon? Well, Tesla to the VWAP short, I think is what's happening right now. I don't know if that's the moon or anything. But it is making a nice little bounce. If it does come into VWAP, that's that 166 and a half. There's no significant like support to resistance price until it gets right back into 168. And you know what? If it gets there, if I thought 168 was a dip by long on a red day when the stock goes down, I'm going to want to short 168 because the, the level is key. The direction was wrong off of it. Uh, I'd rectify that if it got back to 168. So I, when I like a price level like that, I'm usually willing to go the other direction when it retraces. Let's get onto the desk. Oh, sorry, get yeah, to the desk with Adara for crypto. Yeah, this note was initially talked about as more of a report and less of a, an official news bit here on Friday, but now officially we have gotten approval from Hong Kong regulators for spot Bitcoin and Ether ETF launches in Hong Kong. So nice look there. Uh, China AMC, Harvest Global, and Bocera International among the firms that have been giving the green light for these ETFs. So when we have more news on that, we'll let you know. But here's an exciting update here coming from Hong Kong with regards to Bitcoin and Ethereum. In terms of Bitcoin itself here, continuing in this range that we've had on the daily chart from about 65,000 to 72,000 here, right now just creating creeping above that 66,000 area. We did have a little bit of a sell off on the weekend, specifically on Saturday, trying to recover from that right now for BTC. Currently uh, just above that 65,000 area, 65.4, up about 2%. Ethereum faring a little bit better here, just above, uh, just below, sorry, that 3,200 level, up about five and a third percent. BNB very strong here in terms of other crypto names, up 4%. Solana up almost 8%. Cardano up almost 6%. So nice look across the board here for these crypto related names. And we are brought to you by Benzinga Pro. Sign up today for 50% off their premier news and research platform for retail traders with code TTV, capital letters. Use the link in the description to go to checkout. All right, Ozan, you want the cow? That's it, you get the cow. Man, this is a cow day for sure, man. We are making uh, some bread uh, right now, guys. This has been, honestly, like a really, really good day uh, so far here, man. We are uh, really starting to print. I mean, Amazon to the upside, let's go. We just put this on, PL3. Um, Apple still holding. Again, and I shout out to Fiddleback or whatever there in the chat. Like, honestly... You know, we, we put this trade on at the very beginning of the day. So it's like there's hopefully a lot of different styles for everybody here. Whether or not you're trying to um, trade, you know, right off the open. Uh, whether or not you're trying to level into something, uh, layer into it, you know, right now. Like in Amazon, which we did uh, right there, bought some of those dips. Whether or not, you know, you want to trade something. Um, again, you know, we started to get into not super exciting, but been really buying these dips. Uh, and then Tesla, again, trading some exciting names, man. I mean, here comes Tesla. We just shorted. Like, we just shorted that at 166. Again, we just reloaded this right there. What's up, Racer? Yeah, I mean, we're milking it. I mean, we are doing what we have to do uh, right now in this market and pretty proud of it. So, I mean, so far, so good here. This is just... This is going to sound ridiculous, but, it, like, it really just is like another day in the office over here. 
You know, it's like betting Austin Matthews not to get a goal. It's like, you, you know, you, you, you go to work, you put on your hard hat, and you sit down, and then, money, money, you know, you money, spin money, it, and you hope money, for the money, best. Money, and money. like I said, we started the day in the dumps with Tesla. But, you know, like we started from the bottom, and now everyone can see where we're at. So, I mean, you just got to stay, stay, stay true to what's going on. I mean, look at this Amazon trade. Are you kidding me right now? I mean, standing in there buying that 187 dip, I mean, come on. I mean, there, there's some, some kind of like trade gumption that has to happen to, to, to make that. So you gotta sit there and be able to make some trades and like really trust the positions. We're gonna see if Apple wants to continue to work. The one position right now, it, isn't it just so funny that like, again, today will be a really good day, but the, like, the one stock that's really continues to hurt uh, remains to be Tesla. Like we took some money there. Now this is the only one that I'm sitting and worried about. Like it's just crazy how that happens. Sometimes you don't get good reads on stuff and you have to go the other way. But I am shorting this into 167 on some bad uh, publicity, some bad um, job cuts. And then of course, some of those names that again, we don't, aren't too familiar with, but I guess it seemed to hit the name just a little harder than, than I think any of us would have thought. So yeah, it's, we'll, we'll wait for it. But again, another big day, it's a trophy. It was one of those days where it was a key price level more than anything else on Tesla. And if I look back on it, hindsight's always going to be 2020. But one of the reasons I like that support level should have been a reason to even think about the gap fill. And it did, like underneath 68, there's a gap to 65. So if you're respecting that, then it probably should have just been a short underneath there. I just prefer shorting things like Rivian and Lee Auto because uh, they're easier targets than Tesla. So it's just about respecting uh, the price levels uh, as always. And, you know, Frank Joes appreciates you there. Like, this is one of those warnings that momentum was, I think, pretty solid if you stick to your plan. Like, DJT was an easy, I don't want to say an easy short, but in terms of where it turned and how it set up, it was negative news. I think when you have bad news, you can favor one direction. It's been trend down. All it did is try to pop back into previous resistance. It failed it. Now it's just sort of calming down. I don't see any reason to jump back into this name just yet. But uh, just do you. Intel, I'm going to likely reload this one off of that high. We got the move off 36 and a, uh, and a half down into 36.10. If it does put in a, a move off of that high of the day, I'll jump into that one, uh, back into that one. We're already in it, but I want to get a reload if we can. Rivian, if we talked about Rivian, we're still on that one. Uh, Apple's starting to pull right back into VWAP, so it has been taking the stairs up. Just it needs to hold on to VWAP. I mean, the mar this needs to hold on to VWAP for the market as well. Because if Apple loses VWAP, I think we could be retesting some of those lows. Intel's a reload. Coinbase will have to adjust our plan because I don't think we're going to see the 250 level or the 254, which were both fades for me uh, on Coinbase. I, one place that I might jump over to, look, you have the halving going on this week with Mara. I think it's on the 20th is the latest I checked. Uh, Bitcoin halving, that's bad for the miners. Mara has been obviously having a rough time of it. It just got down into the $15 level, which was the major support, maybe even 14 and a half. I think it's getting pretty close to the spot where maybe they priced in all the badness, bad stuff here oh, going into the halving and we could have this bounce. Uh, eventually on Marv. We've been waiting patiently for it to get down here. So 15 bucks even looks like a bit of a spot here for Marv. We could finally at least look the other way. Oh, man. There's Tesla again. Um, we just took a buck there about. Uh, nice little reload all the way down. It just hit 165.50 uh, right there to the downside. Oh, man, this has, been, uh, this has been good, man. This has been really good. Uh, all right, so what else? Uh, nice downside push for Tesla. We're still in Google. I did take a piece out of Amazon again. Yeah, things are getting good. Um, all right, oh, my God, this is crazy, trading sideways. Yeah, you know, and that's why you have to trade what you have to trade, man. Oh, man, uh, so far so good. Look at Amazon, now 70 cents in the money and still going. Apple, Amazon, Google, all longs, uh, followed by the Tesla short. So, yeah, I mean, lots, lots happening, lots happening uh, right now. 
I'm, I'm honestly in relax mode right now because we've already cooked it up. Uh, we're where we need to be. Uh, we've got our Scheffler moments going. Look at this. We'll sort of barbecue it up and we'll take the opportunity to tell everybody what's for lunch right now because honestly, unless something really sets up right now, I'm just going to sort of rest on some of these positions. We'll, we'll trade more. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm going to look for some more opportunities. But right now, Tesla is the short that I want if it does come back up. Today's, um, just like Scotty Scheffler, if you were having uh, a good day yesterday, you might have had a chicken dinner winner. Uh, and today is not going to be any much different than that. It's Cajun and herb crusted breast of chicken with some vegetable couscous and salad. So uh, not bad, not bad for a little bit of a lunch. Shout out uh, to that and a big shout out, of course, to Real Trading. That is our number one sponsor here on um, Trader TV Live. Join Real Trading, get involved today. Um, you know, join over 3,000 traders, 50 plus markets, 3 billion worth of trades and over 400 million shares traded daily with over 50 markets as well. We'll often talk uh, about, you know, who's making money around here. I'll show the top money maker list. Um, but yeah, it's been a good run uh, for traders. That is for damn sure. I mean, just look at what's happening over here. Um, it's been a good little run. Uh, join it up. I hope that you guys are still uh, trading and, and, and having some fun with us here at Trader TV Live. Absolutely. And uh, guess what just hit the low of the day? If you guessed anything EV related, you're probably right. Rivian just bounced off the low as it continues to flush to the downside. Don't know what to tell you, but this stock, it's a short till it's not. And one day, I don't know when, Rivian's going to bounce. And when it does, it's going to be spectacular. One day, Neil's going to bounce. And when it does, it's going to be spectacular. Although this is bouncing now. I, I, can't, I tend to think if it gets back above $4, maybe it'll just pop. Oh, my goodness. We forgot about like, Bob, but The market's at the lows. Oh, right man. now, the only thing here is got to look at what's happening with the long position I have. So with the market at the lows, I'm going to back off for the third entry on Apple. If it, if it breaks this consolidation down, I want to wait for the low of the day. But we're sitting in shorts that are all working as the market takes out the low of the day. Is what it is. We just got to reload in Intel as well up at that top. So the 36.5, we'll play this back into VWAP one more time. As Rainmaker said, Bob is holding support. That could be worth a look. I mean, Alibaba, Alibaba's got that 70 level. I'm hoping it's at 70. No, it's 71. Alibaba's got that 70 level, which has been a great buy zone for the last couple of months here. I don't wonder if this isn't something, another fresh low when you should be buying 70s or 70 and a half or whatever you can get. I do like this range that Baba's in. The problem with it is it can't break out the top, but once it's down at 71, it's been a buy for two months now, uh, going all the way back into February. So, uh, yeah, February, early February. I don't see why it's any different today. I like that look. Was that Rain? It was Rainmaker, right? Uh, I, th I think so, but we've got to go over to the desk right now. It's 1040 or over to the board, one or the other. It's Adara, and she's in pink today. Nice, uh, nice suit there, Adara. Let's go find out what she's all about. Lots of sectors actually showing some strength right now, despite the market's attempt to move to the downside here. Finance very strong, both Goldman Sachs and Schwab here on watch after their earnings reports this morning. Health technology also pretty good look right now. Producer manufacturing, consumer services, health services on watch here, despite the fact that they're trading up today. We have UNH reporting this week, so keep an eye on that one. And retail trade, Amazon pretty strong here and a couple other names worth watching in that sector as well. Also want to talk about quickly technology services, pretty flat, but a couple names to the downside to keep an eye on. ServiceNow, NOW, you getting a downgrade here. This one trading a little bit negatively and CRM to the downside. Also, after uh, the Wall Street Journal reporting that this one is in advanced talks to acquire Informatica. So CRM, Salesforce to the downside here, guys. What a, what a nice bounce we're just seem, seem, seemingly having right now because the net's starting to go to the upside. So we know we're doing something right here uh, as this market starts to bounce just a little bit here. So there goes Google back up. We like that trade for sure. Um, but let's just wait to see if it wants to continuously work um, as it's going back up. We did get a piece out there at 20. We did get a piece out of Amazon as well. Uh, sorry, that's AMD, my bad, um, on Amazon as well. I th I'm feeling like another spot up here. Let's put that right now, if we can, up into the 80s uh, for AMZN. Oh, well, I'm actually waiting already at 90. Let's get a little bit better. I want to hold on to Apple. We already got out of Google. And then we did take advantage of that dip in, in um, Tesla. We didn't get 165. We are still waiting for 164 um, as a possible bottom spot there for Tesla. 
So it looks like, looks like we're bouncing. We got as low as 164.60. So yeah, I need that to break. If it breaks, great. Uh, that's the level that I'm looking for, 164 coming through, hopefully sooner rather than later on TSLA. So just, just a level there um, that we look at as this market comes back in. We'll, we'll leave you guys at our highest net. Well, it's still 18 minutes. As long as we don't screw something up too badly here, we'll leave you guys at our highest spot. So that's always uh, something pretty good. So here we go. Nice little movement down on Tesla. We wait for a 165 break. So I got this ca Cavill, Cavill, whatever it is, KVL, like the third halt of the day on it. It's only 800,000 float. So my guess is this is not going to be the last halt that this thing has. Uh, the current tap, I mean, for NASDAQ stock, we keep getting these t taps which are exactly flat. It's in New York where we get better updates in terms of where it's going to open up. But 675 is where it's halted. Sorry, 73 is where it's halted. 75 is where it looks like it wants to open up. It's already broken out after a reverse split, so it's a reverse split and a runner. These things usually come back in pretty heavily. It would be a, almost a 3x move. Uh, check that. Yeah, it'll be a 3x if it goes to like seven. Like $8 would be the 3x move. So I'd watch that level and maybe the $10 level for that. Apple still continuing to work. Intel just came out as it took the local high. So we reloaded Intel. There we go. We reloaded Intel in front of 65, 36, 50. It wicked that top and right back underneath. If it does a wick top like that, then I want to make sure I'm getting right back into it and then give it to the same, give it to the same local top. So we like that level. Sometimes we'll run the stops and I'll jump right back into it. That's what's happened here. We're still in Apple. We, we liked NVIDIA one time for the long and now suddenly it doesn't look so good. So we had it one time on a breakout. This just does not look strong anymore. I love it when it does that early reversal and gives you some momentum breaks in the morning. But when it, when it can't hold on to 900, and we could be right back at 880 on this bad boy. I thought maybe there'd be a chance to get into like an AMD short at 65 on that curl. AMD already down at 162 and giving up the ghost as uh, Sharif likes to say. AMD, I don't know why he says it that way. Bitcoin is now below the 65 level. Coinbase, we like the 250 short, but we're going to have to stick a fork in that one. It's way too weak uh, to be able to get that back. Has to be some kind of a pop. I think Nvidia probably gives you a VWAP short. At some point, you just want this one to settle down a little bit. It just broke VWAP underneath. We've seen it do this before, where it'll give you a consolidation, and then you can short 97s. SMCI's done this for us as well. Uh, that's worth a look here. But my guess is, yeah, SMCI is still holding on to VWAP. So some strength over an SMCI. This and Micron have been a little bit strong today. If I say Jimmy Johns to you, does that mean anything to you? Jimmy Johns? No. Exactly. Uh, so shout out to a day, tra day trader cut. Yeah, exactly. Day trader cut right here. He says he cries himself to sleep every night. And by the way, thank you so much um, for mentioning that. The podcast was fire. We really uh, appreciate that. We're putting a heck of a lot of work uh, into that as well. But here we go. Day trader cut. He still cries himself to sleep every night knowing that I have no idea what Jimmy John's is. So there we go. So uh, now you can cry yourself to sleep twice because uh, neither did Neil. But I know what it is now because of the podcast. Um, and yeah, it's just a restaurant. So it's a burger joint here. Um, sandwich chain, sorry. So there you go. Uh, headquartered in, in L Illinois. Sorry, I was going to say Indianapolis. Illinois right there. Uh, 1983. So yeah, but probably we should know about it. Uh, none of that here, though, uh, in Canada. So again, claim ignorance on that. And the reason why we bring it up, and again, thank you for the nice comments on the podcast. I mean, traders stay late, and we're staying late to put out for you uh, again on the podcast. But the reason why we talked about that as I scroll through looking for the information from my Twitter, we did have food inflation. Here it is right here. So if you're going to notice, man, shout out to Starbucks because they're the ones holding fort, man. Right now, since 2014, um, we've had uh, inflation up 31%, right? According to the government. Starbucks, only prices up only 39%. Subway, 39%. Panera, just 54%. Wendy's, as you go, there's Jimmy. As we were doing this on the podcast, I'm like, Jimmy John's. Okay, I don't know. Uh, there's Jimmy John's. But look at McDonald's, man. McDonald's and Popeye's up huge, um, you know, since we've last heard from them. Uh, so we'll have to wait to see uh, McDonald's up 100%. Pricing up. Remember in that big one run? Decade. That run on like everyone wanted to go to the chicken sandwiches, and then yeah. you had prices go up there. But there were a few. We 
but just like 100%. Like, like it's crazy. P Starbucks gets, you know, sort of bad rap sometimes, but to only be up 39%, I thought was pretty good. Well, I think uh, the, the, the starting point is different. Plus two, star Starbucks knows. Well, no, that's just from inflation. No, I know. Yeah, starting from No, but like, there's no, the starting point meaning what is it that you are selling and do you really change that? Like, I think McDonald's made a, McDonald's has made some changes in expanding the menus that probably in a time with inflation was going to hit them a little bit more, where Starbucks has stayed right in their lane a little bit better. I think it's a fantastic brand for that. I'm not a huge Starbucks guy because, like, I love making my coffee at home and then it is what it is. I'm not a Tim Hortons guy either. But the thing about that list, I was going to get back to it. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jimmy John's not the only thing on there that I'll, it's not about claiming ignorance to, but I've never, I've never had uh, Chick-fil-A. Oh, wow. Well, there's I've, one right one second away. No, I've had one, I've had one, once I was at, um, shoot, now at Chipotle, I've been to Chipotle once. One time, in, it was in Philly, I think, uh, I, had, I had Chipotle. And that's about it. Yeah, the Chick Fil A is but, uh, on that one. I'll no, I, I've heard. Look, man, I've heard that I'm missing on Chick Fil A. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, but I'll I'll cop to it. Like I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that I've eaten some something that I haven't. I, I should probably have a look at it. You know, I love food, and I'll eat just about anything at least once. Like I'll try just about anything. If I don't like it, I don't like it. But you know, that's gotten me. Uh, we've made some mistakes when it comes to that. But uh, generally speaking, I tell my daughter this all the time. Like you don't know you don't like it until you give it a shot. Right, so Chick-fil-A, I'm willing to give it a shot. Uh, Intel, we reloaded after getting wicked out. We just took some out in front of the 40 level. Apparently, Monty G says I'm sleeping on both. Well, that's yeah, obvious. Just, no, I mean, no, yeah, I'm not going to pretend that's not yeah. true. Well, I call it like it is. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay, so, hmm. Uh, it's 1048 right now, man. I mean, I'm, uh, we, we already sort of talked about the mode that I'm in right here. Look at Tesla. Tesla's starting to go back up to the upside, so watch out now. Um, we'll take some more shares right here at view up, and then we'll get out at 167 if it breaks higher. This is a short that I like. I mean, this little bit of a pop-up. Let me see if we could take something here at 08, 09. Uh, there it is, just for a little bit of a reload uh, on this. Again, we're not... Uh, this is more kind of like busy hands trading right now. I mean, we don't really need to be in this trade. I, I don't mind the pop-up. I want to short it. This is a negative name. We're still underneath um, and no, no good news. So there's a quick little short there at 166.09. You, you guys just saw me take it. I mean, there's 10 cents. I, you know, to scalp in and out of it might be worth it. But after that, man, I mean, not much else happening here for me anyways right now. Let's check take a quick look at Disney. Uh, this has been down to 114, so I didn't even realize it was down this low. Uh, but, oh, yeah, well... Again, not looking at some of the names on Friday as we sat here and uh, watched some of the market come back down in, but right there, 114, 115. We've, we were, remember, we got some out up here on Disney 120 and change and have been talking about that. So, so far, so good on that one. So far, so good on the reload with Tesla as well. If you're rocking with me, there's 20 cents right there just in front of you. Uh, if you want to take it, do it. I'm going to wait for a little lower again as well. Let's see if we get a 165 flat on this one. But before uh, that happens, because we're not going to get there that fast, here goes Tesla. Wow, that was a pretty good one. Face slap again on that. We'll put out 165.20 and let's go over to Adair at the desk. EXY continuing to tick higher here. This is the fifth day in a row to the upside. Decidedly above that 106 level. Now next resistance is going to be around that 107 that we saw previously back in October, November 2023. So nice move up here for the US dollar. A couple economic data points we got today. NAHB housing market index coming exactly flat for the month of April 51 compared to the previous and estimated number of 51. But we also had uh, business inventories month over month slightly higher than expected 0.4 versus the estimate of 0.3. Uh, and U.S. retail sales month over month for March coming in also higher than the estimate, 0.7% versus 0.4% estimated. So those are the economic data points we got today, but we have a lot to keep an eye on later in the week, specifically Fed speakers tonight at 8 p.m. So after market close, uh, we get Feds daily, but tomorrow we have a slew of Fed speakers, including Feds Jefferson, Feds Barkin, and Feds Powell, Fed Chair Powell speaking tomorrow at 1.15. So lots of economic data to keep an eye on that could impact the USD heading forward, guys. You know what else is heading lower? CRM. Uh, shout out to CPDB. So CRM is getting close to that 275 level. And we mentioned, uh, well, I'll, to, I'll double check the name of the company that they are allegedly buying. It's just, uh, there's no firm deal just yet, but 275 was a good pivot spot Get for down. this stock back in like January. If it gets a couple of dollars to the downside, we'll look to 
I'm looking to look for a bottoming pattern on CRM. I think there's going to be buyers on that, but it's failing the 50 period today, which is not necessarily a good sign. You're back into VWAP on Intel. We took one leg out in front. I'm looking for another one down at 36.20. Apple's starting to come back in. It's going to double check on Lee Auto. Lee Auto's now holding VWAP. So it's held 29. It's a bit of a higher low. So we had one good short, one half good short because we got a much bigger move the first time through. You we were able to get almost a full percentage point. Now you're getting like a 10 cent move. That's right. It's in for Informatica, that's the name of the company, that they have potential offer in. There's nothing firm uh, yet for that. Do keep your ear to the ground. Um, we've been asked about what we think about like earnings. Netflix is the big one this week. And yeah, I know you guys were I don't talking about know who's tonight. I have to still check. Uh, tonight was. It was not, there it is. Wow. No I'm one, not sure nobody, who it is. It was nobody stood up. It was tomorrow with we had somebody else that was decent. Uh, Morgan Stanley obviously is going to be going to be the one after Goldman Sachs today. I mean, props up. I mean, look at that. We just went, I mean, you guys saw me. I sat there, I said, let's do, I said, busy hands. Maybe we don't need to take this, but you know what? When busy hands can just start collecting money from this guy, we might as well do that. So there it goes, Tesla, like as if. It falls right back into last support. So it goes up into resistance, falls right back into support. I mean, I honestly just feel that when you're watching, you know, the way we're trading and all of this, it's like trying to keep it basically um, as simple as we can possibly be uh, right here. So this is something uh, that we're going to do here on Tesla is just keep on getting in and out, in and out. So, um, okay, perfect. Uh, okay, that's good. Um, all right, so just looking at that. All right, that's that. Uh, yeah, we can, we can quickly look. I don't know if we have the earnings board. I know t someone in the chat saying day trader cut. TSM's not till later in the week. TSM's right. like it's not, yeah. Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. Uh, they're later in the week. Like this week, you start off with today, Goldman and Schwab, and then you get Morgan Stanley tomorrow, and we get Netflix later in the week as well. Yeah, there's not much, there's not much coming tonight after market if today's the 15th. You come over to my screen right here, or if we have it, we can show the earnings board. Well, that's Remina. Earnings? The screen, yeah, or earnings board, whatever you have, whatever you, whatever you have. Okay, there it is. Um, so tonight, not much, man. Digital brands could be something there. Uh, we've talked about that a couple times before. And then even tomorrow, man, Morgan Stanley, it's still the banks. We got Johnson & Johnson, Johnson & Johnson, and United Health. Yeah. So a couple big down names America, coming maybe. through uh, tomorrow. Now, so. LVMH, I suppose, is... I yeah, mean, LVMH will give man. you... I'm the world richest man. But that'll give you some indication how the, uh, how the other side is doing. It's, it's, not, it's, it's a high-end retail, obviously, but uh, certainly gives you a bit of a bellwether uh, for the market in a certain, a certain point. But I think later on this week is when it gets, we like when that big tech starts to come in. So when you get yeah, TSM well, yeah. and when you get, <laughs> and when you get TSM, when you get Netflix, those are going to be two biggies uh, to be sure. So tech, TSM is actually about to turn red if this market continues uh, to the downside. Oh, you're right. Day trader cut. Yeah, same day as Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Those, th those are the ones. I mean, you get misses there, although I'm not necessarily thinking it's going to be all bad for TSM. This has been riding the 50 period moving average. So I don't wonder if it doesn't give you a chance one more time to bounce off of that. If you come to my chart for a second, TSM has been clean off the 50 period since late uh, last year, probably yeah, right in here, like November, it's been holding on for dear uh, life. I love that kind of a trend. If it bounces off 135, great. That looks pretty solid. Uh, NEO apparently continues to break down. Maybe you're not gonna see VWAP on NIO. That's fine. I mean, Lee Auto, that's working. Rivian continues to be weak. Uh, we can play with these ones. Rivian's holding the low of the day. I'm looking for the next push back into VWAP to short this. Otherwise, we're going to get to 850 uh, today on Rivian. And I have no idea where the bottom's going to be on this stock. Like at this point, the only one that's not cratering, well, I mean, they're all trending down. But percentage wise, the one that's holding up the best, if anything, would be loose on a day to day basis. It just doesn't move much. I'm guessing that's just because of the Saudis. Uh, as you guys were mentioning on the pod as well. And that's the only thing that sticks out for them because all that matters for EV names at this point that are not Tesla, that are not the Chinese ones that are selling and making money like BYD, is Runway. How much cash you got behind you? And that's the thing that stands out uh, for Lucid at least. 
Oh, good. Um, okay, yeah, I mean, Lucid, Rivian, I mean, all these names continue to go to the downside. We will stay in our lane today and continue to hold Tesla short. As of right now, it's, we're, we're a dollar in the money basically on that, well, we're 80 cents on that reload, and we're just gonna wait. There's only a couple more minutes left. So again, thanks everybody. Uh, it's been a, quite the show. Um, we're, ba we're back at two. Uh, you're gonna have the Midday Madness with Sharif and Adara. That should be coming out uh, very, very soon. Uh, where we should have today, I think, what both is Sharif and Adara trading live, which 100%. should be exciting. So Entitl uh, entitlements went in, so she can see all the live markets, yep. made sure of that. Yep, so yep, yep, yep. So should be good. That's it, man. No more excuses, you know? No more excuses. We need to get these guys graduated up. Uh, and it's going to start with Adara uh, coming through. Uh, immediately on that one. So just congratulations try. to Adara and You're everybody on. else uh, who continues to put through that grind right now. Uh, it's been a little bit of a grind today, man. We're just like four or five of us uh, positive. But yeah, it's been a, been a little bit of one today. A good day overall. I mean, to trade some of these names, some ups and some downs. As you can see, though, the market has been really trending to the south side. So the fact that like PL number one is Apple long. That's pretty incredible for sure. AMD, we had the short. We got out. We didn't get out early. We got out a little too early, but still, that's two for two there. Amazon, we just reloaded. That's three for three on Amazon. Google puts us four for four today. Um, and then Tesla goes four for five. So, um, so far, so good. It's been a really good day. Only two minutes left. Um, again, what are you guys doing? Uh, not breakouts. Small cap trading today all week. So if that is okay. your specialty, uh, join them on the midday as we'll talk about different levels to look for, news indicators, so on and so forth on the midday. So there it is, how to trade with both Adara and Sharif. So we stay positive on Amazon, but there it goes breaking back below. So we'll just hit the siren because we're out. Positive name on Amazon. We, made, we wound up net Virtually the same as AMD. Look at all of these fills on Amazon here today. A lot of trades, and we make the same amount of money as this one in and one out. Go figure. Sometimes trading is a little simpler uh, than it needs to be, but um, that's just a good example of you know understanding what stocks are doing um, and what your strategies are. So I'll review that uh, on Amazon. Yeah, I, I just saw in the chat someone saying that uh, Cavill is a Zach Morris. It was Lindsay Spence saying Cavill's a Zach Morris pump and dump. I actually didn't realize that guy was still doing pump and dumps. I thought he was done with the latest legal troubles. But be careful, be careful when you're trading small caps for the reasons behind it. If some biopharma name has a float of one million and le has legitimately good news, there's reasons why it can squeeze. If something is only going up because it's being pumped in a message board, you have to do your best not to be the exit liquidity uh, for the other people that are trading it. So that's a, you know, that's a game that we try to stay far enough away from. Uh, there are opportunities to just play momentum, but uh, you have to be careful when it does run dry. Um, DJT, it's bouncing off 27 for another higher low. This could end up being an SSR bounce play down over 15%. As long as it holds this 27, that's where we got out. I think it has a chance uh, to get to the upside. Marcelo just said he's waiting for Uber to flush. Ooh, I like Uber. But ever since that robo-taxi news, or story, I should say, because uh, it wasn't really, all we got was on August 8th, look out for the robo-taxi. We don't really know exactly what that's going to be. It's been looking a little bit weak uh, on, on Uber. And the downside is Uber has lost, not just lost the 50 period, but since it came back underneath, Look at it just hold exactly at the 50 period moving average on the daily at, at 76 bucks. So I look at that and it just rejected it again today. That's pretty bearish. Lower high, rejected trying to break the 50 on the daily with that move here and now heading to the downside. I'd be inclined to think Uber looks short uh, to me. It's breaking the low of the day as we speak. Yeah, you know what, I'm convincing myself. I'm gonna short back into BWAP in here on Uber. I like the stock, but when you lose a 50 period moving average on a false breakout, then a short into VWAP is going to make sense. It is now 11 o'clock. We'll send you guys on over. It's Learn to Trade Small Caps with Adara and the Professor. What is up, beautiful people? Oh, sorry. What is up, beautiful people? Um, <laughs>